This is NHTV2, North Haven Government Television, a service of North Haven Community Television. The following program is brought to you through the support of the town of North Haven. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Planning and Zoning Commission <coughs> meeting for December 4th, 2018. My name is Vern Carlson, and I'm the chairman of the commission. Um, we do have some public hearings tonight and some site plans, as well as some other business to take care of. Uh, before we get going, um, let me introduce the staff to you and, uh, and the commission. Uh, to my extreme right is Andy Pelavacqua. He is our town engineer. Next to him is Alan Ferguson, land use administrator. To my left is Mary Lee Radzewski. He's our court reporter. To her, next to her is Pam Miller, our staff secretary. With that, Jim. Jim Gilletti, regular member. Teresa Ranciato, Gilletti, regular member. Ron Penton, Vice Chair. Richard Wilson, Secretary. Okay, with that being said, uh, just let me quickly go over. Anyone here that doesn't know, the uh, on the public hearing, the applicant will present the application. The, the board is, uh, the commission is through with their question. We'll open it up to the public. And then, of course, uh, the applicant will have an opportunity to, to uh, respond to any questions that you may have. Uh, on site plans, there is no public input. And, of course, in, um, in deliberation, there is no public input. With that being said, Alan, is there any changes to the uh, agenda? Well, there are. Uh, the site plan num uh, number three is P18-37, will not be heard this evening. Um, they need to complete their course at wetlands, which they have not yet. Uh, I would like to ask the commission if they would consider adding the change of use um, for two Broadway to the agenda. Mm -hmm. I'll do that one second. Is there any other changes, Alan? Any other changes? No, sir. Okay. That number two Broadway uh, is uh, a change of use from an from a, I don't know what it is, uh, the Office. light center uh, to yep. a nail salon. Can I have a motion to accept that onto the agenda? Make a motion. A second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Okay, it's on the agenda. Um, okay, with that being said, um, I think we can open the meeting with our first public hearing. Um, Rich, if you will read the, read the call. Sure. P18-39, applicant of Bernard Pellegrino, applicant, proposed amendment to the North Haven zoning regulation to amend section 8.8.7.2 to permit branded information signs under certain conditions. The proposed amendment is on file in the land use office and in the office of the town clerk. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the commission, my name is Bernard Pellegrino. My address is 10 Marlboro Road here in North Haven. Um, I'm the applicant. Uh, uh, I've been retained by property owner at 415 Washington Avenue and its tenant, Amazon, uh, to propose a modification to section 8.8.7.2, subsection 6 of your regulations regarding signage in commercial and industrial zones. Um, text change is um, uh, in front of you it, it, on lots containing 100 acres, not less than 100 acres, and a minimum of 2,000 parking spaces to permit branded informational and directional signs having square footage of no greater than 20 square feet. Uh, so long as the branded area on the sign is no greater than 10% of the individual sign area. And I have a, a graphic that I'll show you in a minute um, that kind of demonstrates what they would look like. Um, the reason for the, the change is that on large sites like this, where you have a national uh, tenant, um, the logo or the brand 
that they have on their signage package is something that's uh, familiar to um, visitors to that site, especially truck deliveries. They're used to the signage. Uh, their visitors are used to the signage. The tenant is used to the signage. Um, these signs, um, I'll show you uh, what they would look like. Um, some of them would look like. So, in our case, the Amazon logos, these would be, for instance, in the parking lot where you have aisle two, aisle three, et cetera. Vendor parking, directional signage within the site, entry signs, there's other signs that go over the loading docks. Um, <coughs> this reg would only apply to signs that are no greater than 20 square feet, which is still a relatively modest sign, five by four. And as you can see, any logo brand would be required to be less than 10% of the total sign area. Um, on most sites of this sign size, for this type of sign, the signage would be, with the logos, really not be visible from the street. So it's really not advertising sign. Again, it's more of the branded signage that a tenant like this is used to having, and as I said, their guests, visitors, vendors, truck delivery folks are familiar with the signage. Um, in our case, the majority of the signs would be on the loading dock behind the building, between the building and the railroad, so nobody would really ever see those. Um, I guess it's, it's also noteworthy that they have a kind of a national uniform sign package that is in their sites, and again, uh, it's something that their visitors and, and vendors are uh, accustomed to. So this is just really uh, for the vendors that are coming into the... Well, or the site. visitors. It's yeah, not visitors public like advertising. Yeah. I mean, they've got permitted signage already permitted for the Washington Avenue location. This would be back within the site um, and is meant, you know, for a large site with a lot of parking, <coughs> which kind of limits its application. Um, to those types of sites. Well, and just by way of explanation, so really what's going on here is these signs are like directional signs, for lack of a better word. Go here for visitors, go here for parking, go here for loading. And normally they'd be exempt if they had nothing on. From Our sign regulations only let you have so much in the way of signage. You're now putting the logo on them, so if you don't have this amendment, they become signs, you have a problem putting them up. Correct. So this is to exempt huge businesses like Amazon. I don't know any other 100-acre sites that we actually have. Not in the commercial um, or industrial zone. With, you know, whatever, whatever you said, 2,000 yeah. parking spaces. So it's just to let them on the, the normal directional signs have the Amazon logo. That's yeah, we, and we crafted the language to put some limitations on yeah, the size right. of the logo that we thought were reasonable. Yeah. I don't have any problem. Please? No. What? I have no questions. What's no, no they're all in the parking lot. So. Yeah. yeah. In the driveway. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there anyone here who'd like to speak uh, in favor of this? Mary? You want to speak in favor? Okay. I just have a question. So I was wondering, I didn't see the language. I was wondering within Mary, the language. Oh, I'm sorry. Mary White, uh, Summerlee. I was wondering if um, within the language there was something in there that says, um, you know, for large sites that this would apply to? It says it's got to be 100 acres. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. That was my question. You want okay. this, Thank you. Oh. I don't have a problem with it. it. Makes sense okay. to me. Good. Okay. Is there anyone here else who would like to speak? Well, in favor or have a question? Now in opposition. Hearing none. Staff is all set. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Public hearings closed. Okay. Um, move on to uh, P eighteen forty three S. 
I'm going to let the record show that we're going to take uh, the site plan as well as on this to uh, be number six, and that would be uh, P18-43. Okay, Tim. Ready. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Tim Lee. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Fasano with Polito Lee and Florentine in New Haven. I'm here tonight on behalf of Vigliotti Construction with respect to the properties at 441 and 447 Washington Avenue. Happy to report that we're finally here to present the special permit and site plan application. It's taken us a little bit of a while to get here, so you have some familiarity with what the project is, but let me just run through the basics before I turn it over to uh, Steve Ditsko, the project engineer from Maloney McBroom, Ray Sullivan from Sullivan Architects, and Neil Olinsky, also from Maloney McBroom. He is the traffic expert. Uh, the application comprises two properties. In total, they are a little bit greater than three acres of property. We have submitted the application under the Upper Washington Avenue Multi-Use Development District, which is a special overlay zoning district for properties within the IL uh, zoning district. Under the regulation, we are permitted to seek up to 150 units of residential uh, development on the condition that one, 20% of the units are deed restricted as affordable housing. That's a condition uh, that the um, commission added to the regulation at last month's hearing. In addition, the commission was kind enough to amend the regulation last month to reduce the amount of commercial space to 10% of the entire development. The development itself will consist of two buildings. Uh, the size of both buildings combined is 1,120 square feet. If you take 10% of that, we're going to propose a little bit more than 10% of commercial space. We're going to propose 1,000, pardon me, 17,990 square feet of commercial space. So we're exceeding by a nominal amount the 10% uh, threshold. When, we are gonna when you mentioned that, because that was something that came up in Alan's comments. Right. There's a discrepancy. Right. Has yep. that been resolved, Alan? Or I, I think what it is is it, the size of both buildings combined is 174,120 mm -hmm. square feet. If you take 10% of that, you get 17,412 square feet. That's the 10% requirement. We're actually proposing 17,990 square feet of commercial space. So we're, like I said, we're exceeding the... Okay, according to Alan's notes, it says the architecturals only show slightly under 12,000. But the, the only issue with it is just that it needs to be reflected in the parking table, that's yeah. all. Yeah. Um, that, that it would be a larger number. Yeah. Does it, that? Yes. Yeah, you're meeting the requirements. So no it's question. just a clerical type thing? Well, it is, but it would increase the, uh, the parking spaces, the required number by two. But Okay. Not just clerical, but just a question of coordination, if you will. Not a big deal. And to clarify, I just assumed uh, they would say, yeah, we'll change that number. Okay. I think that's the resolution. Yeah. And because we're talking about parking, I'm just going to fast forward to parking because when you're considering the site plan or you're considering the architecture, I want you to also take into consideration the parking requirements. By our calculations under the regulations, we're required to have 179 parking spaces. Mm -hmm. We have designed the site plan to have 36 more than what is required for a total of 215 parking spaces. Once again, that's in excess of 20%. It's our opinion that that is too much parking for this for the site. If you agree, we have the ability to reduce the parking uh, by any fraction that you think is appropriate under the circumstances and create additional green space. As a matter of fact, our traffic engineer is here today and he's done some ITA, ITE studies that show the peak capacity for parking is about 175 parking spaces, which would be less than your regulations. That being said, I'll leave it to the commission's sound discretion. We can do 20% and we could do anything less than 20%. So I would just ask when you're taking a look at the site plan that you, you know, keep that in the back of your mind and we can address it towards the end of the meeting. Um, that being said, I, well, 
In terms of the 150 residential units, as I noted, based on the commission's action last month, 20% of those units are going to be deed restricted as affordable housing units. It will count against the state imposed 10% affordable housing uh, cap. The development is proposing 132 one bedroom units, six studios and 12 uh, two bedroom units. Um, as we discussed during the zone change hearing, we think that this project is beneficial for a number of reasons. One, we're cleaning up a dilapidated, blighted site. The two buildings on both properties have been in a state of disrepair for as long as I can imagine. My client, who is purchasing the property, has agreed to take on the responsibility for the environmental remediation and be the responsible party with the state DEEP. The cost to remediate the environmental contamination is you know, close to $500,000, so he's willing to take that on. Uh, the development is consistent with the other development on Long Washington Avenue. It will work nicely with the Amazon site, both as a residential component and a commercial uh, component. And we think that the, uh, the project is, is really a, the right spot, the right project at the right time. So that being said, I'll now turn it over to Steve Ditsko. Steve can address the uh, site plan with you. Well, that makes sense, most sense that way. I think. Um, thank you for the record. My name is Steve Ditsko. I'm a professional engineer and vice president of Malone McBroom based in Cheshire, Connecticut. Spell your last name, please. Uh, D-I-E-T-Z-K-O. Thank you. And I um, want to tell you a little bit about the site, just the existing conditions, and then we'll, we'll roll into some of the engineering components of the site plan. The site is currently comprised of uh, two parcels, number 441 and 447 Washington Ave. Uh, in total, the two parcels comprise approximately three acres, 3.04 acres. Um, currently situated on those parcels are two buildings, as uh, Attorney Lee mentioned, um, formerly used and um, have been abandoned for a while. Number 445 is the building to the west. Uh, it derives access from the central driveway that serves number 441, 445, and 447. This building is not part of the application, but it'll have a shared access and some shared um, parking aisles uh, in the back, as I'll show you in a moment. Uh, the properties are currently served by all the public utilities, uh, sanitary sewer, uh, regional water authority, uh, public water supply, uh, overhead electric currently, uh, and uh, natural gas and other utilities. Uh, Route 5 is at the bottom of the page here to the east, and uh, that is a four-lane arterial, and the property has a secondary driveway here uh, on the north side of that that would be retained. To the far west is the, uh, the aforementioned um, Amazon property and the railroad in between. So as we move to the proposed site plan, um, is that high enough for everybody? Okay. So number um, 447 is on the north end of the site. This is the recently constructed self-storage facility. And the buildings um, face each other, and uh, the architect uh, will we'll discuss that in a moment. And we have uh, the access here, the retail section of the building is in the front facing uh, Route 5, Washington Ave, the commercial space on the first floor of 447. Um, below number 441 is structured parking with um, living space above. And then the buildings have four stories of, um, of apartments ranging from studios to one to two bedrooms above that. Um, the site, um, it, we're looking to landscape the green space uh, as much as we can with trees in the islands. I know um, your town planner had some comments regarding adding some trees. That's certainly not a problem. The overhead utilities. Are talking about that? I do have a question because that plan's not exactly the same as the plan we have I'm as sorry. far as specific tree locations. This plan. Can you tell me which one's the most current that we're going to be voting on? This plan matches what, what you have. 
uh, we haven't altered the plan from the from the submittal. I think as a as a uh, comment, um, there was a there was a remark that to add some trees on some islands, which is just not you're true. voting on what's in your package. He's presenting that beautiful colored plan, and will not bind him by that. All right. Well, that's that's why I'm asking. You don't see something. The drawings that I got don't have all the trees that are in there. They they don't have all those trees. Correct. No. I like your plan better. <laughs> I like it better too. Let's let's go with this one. Okay. Well, let's we go can, with that one. Let's add some keep, trees. Keep going. Just want to make sure what we're let's talking. Go. It looks right. the same to me. No, it's missing these two trees here. Right. Out in the front here. Yeah. Yeah. But I have two trees there. On that drawing they do, but on this drawing it does not. Going down by my drawing. Oh yeah, this is the architect's plans. Yes. Oh, okay. I'll never go by the architect. I always won't blame the architect. Oh, That's okay. 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 Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank if we you. could do. Okay. Okay. A little coordination <laughs> issue. All right. First time that's ever happened. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, so as I said, the, the utilities would be brought below ground, um, which I think will make things look uh, better than what, what you've seen out there. Uh, the dumpster area will be shared by both buildings and located in the northwest corner of the building, uh, hidden from general view. Uh, in the back, uh, the parking um, has uh, two means of ingress and egress here, um, which, which is good. We prefer that versus a, a dead end parking. The parking circulates around and through under the structured parking here, and the parking in front of 447 has, has two ways in and out. Uh, so nice circulation there. Uh, and the parking comes back, and it'll be uh, tied into the existing parking area for number uh, 445. The architect will explain uh, in better detail on some of the things we have there. What I also want to mention, too, that we tried to make um, the front a little more pleasing with some um, colored uh, pavers, um, which are in the central drive between the buildings. You'll see how all that ties together with some of the elements of the buildings on the, uh, on the rooftop in a minute. While you're on civil, one of the comments was made about some parking access easements there was some conflict that existed with the rear building Can so there address those yes so the the way that the the plan is set up in the rear to the west side the the parking that is required and the, and the 20 percent surplus it's all developed on the property that's held here the aisle spaces um, to develop a full 24 foot aisle would encroach on the parcel for number 445. That doesn't impact their parking yield. There are agreements between the, the property owners that they would share this the access aisle here and here to develop that parking. I know one of Alan's comments was um, that they would like to see a fully developed plan to see how number 445 uh, becomes or remains compliant on the parking, and we're, we're certainly willing to do that. And. Um, um, it's, it's not anything that takes away required parking from the adjoiner. Okay. Um, well, we'll just say the bike rack, did we incorporate that? So we, have, we haven't again? shown any bike racks. Typically, uh, we would put one per building um, okay. in, near, near the front entrance. I think that's a great idea. Um, and so in these plaza areas here are, are the main entrances to the buildings. That would be where we would target those. Okay. Alan and Andy, are you okay with the you know, aforementioned parking spaces in the easement? Yeah, the only, the only the only provision as far as I'm concerned is just we, we need some we need something documenting that that, that is the case, that, that the parking aisles can be shared. Uh, the yeah, concern course. obviously would be that you know if, if that isn't in place then this plan can't function the way it is. That's that's all. So and I understand what you're saying. So there has to be some sort of legal agreement that says that they can use that other side. Correct. Right? So mm -hmm. something has to be an easement has to be granted or something has to happen. Yes, we've been in contact with the owner of that property and they are drafting easements at the time we purchase the property. If this gets approved, then we would also record the easements. See, and I'm okay with the easements. It mentions that there will be easements. So, okay, we need to see them. Uh, but the other thing about it was just to, to work out 
you know, it, for instance, in, in the south uh, west corner, yeah. there's a fence that's on the edge of that. Um, that would be in the easement would would obstruct it. So obviously, that just has to be worked out. Well, I get it, but how do you? So, so they couldn't start doing any work until something was given that says here's the plan and how we're going to be able to effectuate the plan because right now you cannot effectuate that plan yeah we need to uh i would uh put the the comment in as a condition of approval and they don't even start building until it's shown on a plan yeah we don't we don't sign a plan until it, it works Sorry. yeah because there's not actually access to those until legally there's not access to those until you get there right. okay okay uh, the utilities are uh, are pretty pretty straightforward. Um, as I mentioned, the site currently has water and sewer uh, on it. We will connect to um, the existing sanitary sewer uh, lateral that runs up to 445 and currently serves 441 and 447. Your town engineer suggested that that um, sanitary sewer be um, TV'd or, or camera uh, prior to um, connection and, and certainly. Uh, that's a good idea, and if there are any needs for repairs or anything or replacement, um, that's something that will be taken up as part of this project, no problem. Um, water supply is currently derived from Route 5. There's plenty of um, um, pressure and volume uh, in the water main uh, for fire purposes. Uh, that will be brought in to the buildings, uh, 441 and 447, no problem. Uh, as I mentioned, the um, Overhead electric will be uh, rerouted and, and put underground, and that's shown in the in the orange. So we work that out. Again, when you were talking about the water, weren't there some comments from the fire marshal about hydrants? Did that get addressed? Well, no. What we would simply do is add uh, his comments as conditions of okay. approval. You're okay. Um, You're okay with that? I'm sure okay. Steve's not going to object to uh, adding the. Uh, the hydrants um, Just in, in accordance with with the chief's request uh, also the other observation is they're bringing the water line in so they don't have to extend the water line a thousand feet to do it they just got to put in the hydrants mm -hmm. yeah. okay yeah that's not a problem we'll, we'll have one or two hydrants <clears throat> you know different towns have different practices for how they like to, the hydrant and the fire department connection for the building to relate we'll certainly work all that out as we move towards, um, you know, building permit. So the buildings are going to have the um, sprinkler connection on it as well, in mm -hmm. addition to the hydrants. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Can I hear that answer? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Stormwater. Um, your commission may be familiar with uh, other applications on adjoining sites. This section of Route Five is all sand. Uh, it's highly porous. Uh, we look to infiltrate stormwater now to mitigate mitigate increases in runoff. In this case, the site is largely currently paved and full of rooftops. Uh, even with that, we're, we're looking to infiltrate um, the runoff and we are taking the roof leaders from both buildings, uh, taking the entire rooftop and bringing it into these uh, galleries, which are um, four foot tall uh, concrete galleries uh, and the stormwater from the rooftops uh, will go directly in there because it's clean. Uh, the runoff from the paved areas will go through a, um, uh, a stormwater uh, treatment uh, Vortechnic unit uh, that will remove uh, floatables and, and, uh, and grit before it goes in there. That system will fill up. Um, the system over here in the front also will accommodate the drainage from the basins. That could potentially fill up if it does. Um, there is an overflow that comes out to the drainage system on, on Route 5. However, before that overflow occurs, uh, our computations show that we can handle the volume for the 100 year up to and including the 100 year uh, storm event, which is uh, eight and a half inches or so. Um, and we have no increase uh, in peak rates of runoff for all the storms from the two to the 25. The catch basins in the uh, parking lot and driveways, those are designed to handle a 25 year rainfall. Common practice is typically 10 to 25. So that's uh, pretty typical what we have there for the stormwater system and, and very positive in that we're dealing with the runoff without, without any direct uh, runoff to adjacent properties. Good. And you could rely on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unless there's any questions on that, I'm going to hand it off to. Not at uh, the moment, yeah. If you got any questions, we can open them. Thank you. Uh, 
Chief? I guess one minor question. You, you mentioned the lighting, but I didn't yeah. see any lighting plan. Have you guys seen a lighting plan? I was going to bring that up. I put a comment in to add a lighting plan. Right. Um, it didn't trouble me. I think it's something that could just be a condition of approval. Well, but, but how would we know what it is yeah. if it's... Well, I, I hear it doesn't trouble you, but how would we know what it's going to look like? We would probably like to know what it's going to look like. That's a valid point. I was more concerned with the amount of lighting and the uh, the possibility of light trespass. But it, it, no question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to have an opportunity to look at that. Sure. By all means. Go ahead. We are. Yes, we are. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I may, I'll just pass out smaller copies of okay. some of the. Um, Illustrations we have on the boards that might make it a little easier to follow. So we get to, to keep the beautiful mm. renderings, correct? So that's Absolutely. a part of the record at this point. So. Oh. Cars again. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Ray Sullivan of the Sullivan Architectural Group, uh, 155 Broad Street in Milford. Uh, I want to talk first about, uh, you know, we've heard a lot of the technical things, but conceptually, you know, how did we develop the site? So, um, so if you look at Steve's site plan, uh, the, the, the thought was we get kind of two inverted L's looking at one another. And, and we did that specifically. Because you know, you know, sometimes you get a site where you get a great view or, or, or natural feature next door, and and, and 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 we don't here. So so we we try to turn the site inward on itself, so that we can kind of control what happens, you know, you know, inside that environment. So uh, uh, so so thus the kind of the inverted L looking at one another. So uh, a couple of things we try to achieve was um, you know. To, to, to soften the look, you know, we, we you know we have a lot of textured paving, you know, you know, in between. We obviously need to support the building with parking, but but we, you know, we got some of the parking underneath the building, and we're trying to minimize and break up the parking as best as possible, you know, you know, within the center portion. Uh, we try to maximize the landscape area. My renderings may show a little artistic license and a few more trees than Steve does, but uh, but 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 the intent is the same. Um, in we wanted to try to develop quality exterior spaces. Now, I've got another diagram later to show you some of the amenity spaces that we have outside. Uh, but you know, in Steve's plan, you know, we've got this landscape area and a, and a uh, you know a, 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 a you know paved plaza entryway. We have the the same thing on the on the upper building, uh, and uh, and we have this kind of connecting walkway where you can walk from one building to the other and, and make your way out to a sidewalk that's on the road as well. Uh, aesthetically, uh, we were trying to, you know, play off, you know, the history of the industrial use there. So, you know, this is not a, a, a site where you're going to see a pitched roof and clapboard siding and, and divided light windows. Um, and you know, uh, you know, based on the on the uh, uh, industrial history, we're looking for you know something a little bit more bold, a little bit more simple. So, you know, we were trying to introduce. A, a, a more massive material. We're thinking brick. We haven't made all our final decisions yet, but we're, you know, we're, you know, we're thinking brick, which does is rooted in the industrial use, uh, and then accent that with a lighter material. You know, we're thinking that's either you know, you know, composite, you know, you know, metal panel, you know, or, or a cementaceous panel. So it's really you know just those two materials playing off off one another. You know, along with kind of a generous use of windows, and those you know, the, you know, those those windows are going to be large and and uh, abundant in nature the, um, the, the, the the look of the building you know even though it's the older industrial look is we're trying to make the building look contemporary it's a new building uh, and so in doing in doing so I think you know the, you know the window composition you know uh, you know has a contemporary feel to it uh, this more massive perhaps brick material 
you know, would have the same color mortar, so it would look, you know, a little bit more monolithic. You know, we don't want a, a, a whitewashed brick that you'll see on kind of old mill buildings. This is a, you know, this is a new building, and we want to, you know, make it look new. Um, and and then and then the you know the metal panel you know will be a little flatter you know uh, you know set in in um, like the, these metal riglet panels which you know show a little little bit of reveal, and so I think that's a nice contrast to the to the to the heavier brick. So. Um, so you know, in, in summary, you know, we're we're looking to play off the the, the history of the site. Um, you know, you know, keep the keep the look bold, but you know, but also keep it simple. Can I ask a question? About yes. That? I like the look. Mm. It's, Thank I, you. I think it's attractive, and I think it'll be a nice addition. I'm a little bit curious. Of, I'm trying to look at the plans. There is a south elevation of the south building, mm -hmm. and it appears to have significantly less brick than most of the other elevations. And I couldn't find any north elevation of the north building. And, and those are the two biggest profiles that people are going to see going up and down the street. So uh, it, I was wondering what your thoughts were on how to treat those extreme south and extreme north elevations. What, 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 we, what we really wanted to do is we thought highlight you know what what the experience would be from the road for all, all the people going going back and forth. Right, and that's and, why and, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. and so 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 that, that that's how we derive this corner right here. So mm -hmm. so we've got this kind of you know a, a brick piece you know or massive material piece holding up this 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 light of uh, you know you know glass material box almost. And if you look at that, you know that repeats on this corner. You know, it repeats on this corner. You know, if if at 447, we're shown in, in this illustration. We have illustrations of that. It shows on that corner as well. When when you take the north elevation, mm -hmm. you know, and go down. Yep. You know, we we you know, you know, with all due respect to our neighbor, we didn't draw that. The, you know, the storage building next door. Uh, you know, I, I I think you'll actually see less of that. And and a part of what we're part of what we're doing. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying to spend our money where you can see it, and, and so we've got a lot of brick on the road where you can see it. Where you don't see it, uh, you know, we're trying to give the owners the ability to uh, use the more expensive material up front. And if you can't see it, and if it's you know by, you know, if it's in the rear and and, and adjacent to a storage building, you know, we may uh, you know drop off the use of the heavier material and go to the lighter material. But but uh, you know we feel very comfortable. You know, uh, you know we've got other views. You know you know three dimensionally that that uh, uh, you know that that the building aesthetic is carried through. And, and and I think we really get a lot of bang from our buck from the from the road view. Okay. So. Um, uh, I'm just going to call this a conceptual plan because it's not, you know, it's not the plan that's in your in your packet. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, you know, we, we know we need to achieve excess parking. We need, you know, you know, we heard that loud and clear. Uh, and and so the plan presented has 20% excess parking. The other thing we want to do is we want to provide well-developed landscaping, and we want to provide a living, uh, you know, a strong living environment for the the residents. You know, it, you know, if you look at the site now, it's nothing but asphalt and roof. Um, and so, what this picture depicts is that you know if you take you know building four four one or the southern building, you know up on the roof, uh, not not on the roof on the fifth floor, uh, there's an exterior roof garden with exterior activities. You know we've got an exterior kitchen, entertainment area, and that is off a, a club room. Uh, so. For instance, you know that exterior area is 1,700 square feet. The club room is 1,400 square feet. You know, in, in, in your packet you can see that, but 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 sorry, if you know if you're standing at 441, looking at 447, you know you're on the roof deck, looking at the roof deck on the other side. So. Uh, that was part of what we're trying to do. You know, we're, you know, we're trying to, you know, how, you know, how, how do we make this pleasing on the inside? That's why we did the inverted L and developed these landscaped areas. And so, on each building, uh, you know, we've got this this rooftop deck and a clubhouse. I'm sorry, fifth floor deck and a, you know, and a clubhouse. So, you know, here the clubhouse is a little bigger. It's 1,600 square feet. You know, this this ex exterior roof deck area is 2,500 square feet. So. 
So al along with that, we have this landscape area and, and entry plaza down on the ground. Um, and, and one thing we're going to offer, we discussed it, I believe, last time, is that uh, uh, if, if we go from 20% excess to 15% excess parking, uh, and so if, if, if you look at the, the rear of 447, it's all asphalt. And there's a, a lawn area up here, you know, in the parking area for the residents. And this plan shows, you know, if we run the parking, you know, in front of the building all the way out and just do one leg up in the rear, we can actually get a 5,000 square foot landscape area in the back where we think that we can get a more improved amenity area recreation area for the residents so you know we're you know we're, we're happy to provide the 20 percent you know excess parking we're just saying that if we provide 15 percent we can enhance the amenity landscape area you know you know for so the residents what's the number for 15 percent 27 extra spaces 27 extra, okay. So uh, the, these views are, uh, you know, in the eight and a half by eleven, you know, handout. So, you know, we've looked at this one, um, but and this is an interesting view when you when you when you look down the drive corridor. You know, again, you know, we you know we'd like to see that landscaping enhanced as much as possible, almost make it look like a tree lined boulevard. Uh, you, know, you can see the rear building, you know, gets gets tied into these two buildings as well, um, and I, I think it you know presents a you know a handsome elevation on the street. Um, so you know in, internally, you know, uh, you know the, the you know by, by the time you look at that, it's probably relatively equal between you know you know brick and 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 accent lighter material kind of on the inside you know on the on, on the on the, the back side not to view that there, there is less of the of the more the heavier material are you going to have um rooftop mechanicals uh we'll, we'll have uh, uh we'll we'll have oops. we will have rooftop mechanicals but but you know only only in terms of condenser so so you know we'll have uh each unit you know, each unit has its own balcony. So they have their own exterior space. Off that balcony, there's a mechanical closet out there. That mechanical closet will house the furnace and the uh, hot water heater. And so the only thing we're putting on the roof is a residential style condenser. And so, you know, based on the regulations, the height here um, uh, is to the parapet, you know, not to the roof, but, but to the parapet. So, uh, you know, we're maintaining enough of a parapet and, and all those condensers go in the middle of the building, kind of over the corridor down the middle, that, that they're, uh, you know, that, that they're impossible really to see from the, you know, from the street. How, so, how high is the parapet? Uh, the parapet, you know, varies from, from uh, you know, so I, I would say on average it's probably two and a half feet high. Yeah, it says two foot six on this yeah. one. All right. Good guess. So you put them in the center so you wouldn't be able to really see them. Well, yeah, we put, be, yeah, we put them on, it. Yeah, yeah, we put them on the center. That puts them in the middle so you can't see them. And it also puts them over the corridor so that any kind of vibration or whatnot, you know, it's over the corridor. It's not over a bedroom unit. Okay. So, you know, we've got an aerial showing that, you know, we can, you know, to, to scale, that's the building in front, that's the building in back, you know, it's, it may be hard to see from this far away, but again, you know, that's, that's that exterior developed space on the fifth floor here, you can see it cut out of that roof there. Um, this in a different uh, rendering format is, you know, is similar to the, you know, the, you know, the photorealistic, you know, you know, you know image from the front. Um, and then... You know, lastly are the are the base floor plans. Um, there are approximately you know twenty units on each floor. Again, they're predominantly one bedroom and studios. Um, you know, we've got a, a you know a center core coming up here. You know, you know we've got a double loaded corridor. You know, stair. You know, exit stair. You know, exit stair. And again, you know, each individual unit has its own deck. You know, e even this depicts. 
the you know the, the the mechanical equipment closet that's out there. Uh, and so the only thing up on the roof is again is that that residential. Um, you know, condenser. So, you know, when we get the 20 units per floor, we take the units away on the fifth floor to create the club room in that exterior space, which is how we get to 75 units, you know, in each building. So, in summary, that's the building. If you have any questions. Well, we have someone else to, to uh, Yes. Jack? As part of the application, we did submit a traffic study from Lynn McBroom. Neil Olinsky from Malone is here. He can address any traffic <coughs> questions the commission has. Neil also prepared a study of the parking, um, and based on his analysis, the, the maximum parking required would be about a 174 uh, parking spaces. The regulations require 179, so we're not looking for 174. Um, but if you want to have a discussion regarding the parking spaces, Neil's here. He can certainly go through his analysis with you um, if it's something you want to consider. I've got one very minor question um, on the traffic on table two, page three. It talks about estimated number of vehicle trips, and it's 97 in the morning, 127 in the afternoon. Is the reason those don't balance or... <clears throat> For the record, Neil Olinsky with my Lord McBroom. I'm sorry I didn't get that. <laughs> sorry, be quick. Neil Olinsky, O L I N S K I. Thank you. <clears throat> um, basically, th there's two different time periods that we're looking at. And you'll see that the we do break it down by different land uses. Um, what you basically have for the difference, and the reason why the afternoon is higher is there's more retail traffic in the afternoon, as you'd expect. Not every store is open or busy, for instance, during your typical morning peak hour, which might happen between 8 to 9 or whatever. That is the main main reason why the afternoon is higher. Okay. <coughs> so any question? You usually have questions. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, <laughs> so I, the upshot to your traffic study is that this this development is not going to have an, any significant negative impact on the traffic on Wash Avenue. Is that what they are? That is the big picture, correct. Which is it, and somewhat disconcerting to me because as long as I've been on this commission, I haven't had a traffic study come in front of me that didn't say <laughs> that something's not going to have a negative. Here's a, a couple of specific questions. Table three, capacity analysis summary. Can you explain that one to me? <clears throat> Table three is, as you mentioned, the capacity analysis. So that is when we look at the different intersections right. in the area, or study intersections. Okay. And for, you, you can see the different rows are the different <clears throat> intersections that we well, analyze. Essentially route five and it's different roads. Correct. Right. The key thing is that there's two time periods, but within each time period we have a background and a combined. And what do those two and terms the, mean? The difference is the background is a scenario where there is roadway traffic just before this development is in place. Okay. And the combined is when we add our new estimated site traffic on. Okay. So you're basically looking at a before and after, a without so versus a with. Before the development and after the development. That's correct. Okay. So as I read, some of those went down. Is that accurate? <clears throat> yep. Like, uh, you know, Route 5, Route 5 at, at I-91 southbound exit 12 off ramp, doesn't that go from a B to a C? Correct. So that got a little worse. So right? that got a tiny bit worse, mm -hmm. but it's, tiny bit. it's not in the traffic world a um, major um, concern. Okay. So help me understand what would be a major concern in the traffic. So the, the biggest concern is when we start seeing levels of service decrease during peak hours, by the way, to right. a level service E or an F. D is um, right on the threshold, so D to E is right on the th threshold. So where it says Route 5 at I-91 northbound exit 12 on off ramp goes from C to D, and it's, then it's got a C in parentheses. 
Correct. So we're starting to get into the threshold, right? Right. So for for that example, when it went from C to a D, when yep. we added in our site traffic, we looked at in the brackets what would happen if we at that intersection just simply um, retime how the signal is operated in terms okay. of the different the amount of time for the different approaches okay. at the at that particular light. So if you were to essentially optimize the timings at that intersection, very minor, you could bring it back essentially to the level of service. And that's why it has C. the parentheses, I assume? That's correct. Now, can you do that? I mean, are, who controls those? Well, at the end of the day, it's a state signal. That's kind of what I thought, right? And they um, would have the final say. Can you right. request? We can request it. We can, most towns, in fact, every town has a, what is referred to as a local uh, legal traffic authority who is sort of a liaison between the DOT and the town. Usually he's a the LTA, whomever it is, I'm not sure. Off the top of my head is a member of the, the police department. <coughs> and we could work with them to to approach DOT and see if, if they would entertain that. Well, I'm so, assuming with Amazon coming, there may be some kinds of requests like that anyway. That's correct. Or, As part of the Amazon, because we looked at their approvals, they right. had a, a number of improvements that were conditioned on their approval, conditioned by the, the Office of the State Traffic Administration, which included signal timings as well as uh, some minor widening at a, some intersections and things like that. Okay. Well, that gets to my, my really the last question. Actually, there's, there's several of them, several of the intersections go down in service, mm -hmm. but you're saying it's not a significant down. Right, that's right? that's correct. Okay. Um, when you did the background and combined, is Amazon factored into that? Because Amazon's yes. a lot of cars coming out, right? Yes. We presume? Correct, for context, I mean, our site is one-tenth the amount of traffic right. that Amazon is anticipated to generate. So we did include Amazon's traffic in both the background and combined scenarios. So, okay, that, I don't understand how you did that. That's wait, so if they there's going to be a thousand people working at Amazon, however many cars it is, like yours, if you're saying you're at ten percent, mm -hmm. and at ten percent, the vehicle trips in the mornings like at peak is ninety seven, so they go to like a thousand, right? Nine hundred seventy, mm -hmm. roughly, yes. Yeah. Um, so how is that factored into your capacity analysis? That's all I'm trying to understand. So Amazon had their own traffic study, similar yeah. to this, but a bigger study. Also said wasn't going to have any negative impact even right. with a thousand well, new cars. I can't speak for them, but. <laughs> yeah. well, you looked I haven't their, seen one You yet. looked at their report. We did, yes. yes. And I, I think, I'm guessing part of what they said was that they're not having an impact if they do all their improvements. Right. That was my And the signals can handle it. Right. And your best argument, what you're really ultimately telling us is like, they're putting a thousand cars out, we're putting out a hundred cars, we're not impacting it anywhere near like they're impacting. That is the big picture takeaway. Yeah, Correct. That's fair. Okay. Did Those I answer all, your question? You did. Thank you. Just related to that, mm -hmm. in your note with the parentheses, it says minor timing and offset changes. Terminology-wise, is timing and offset the same thing? They're related. Or? They're related. The timing is, if you want to get into the details, the um, what is called the the phasing and splits. So, if you, you know, when you get to an intersection, if you just sit there and watch it enough, it will cycle through all of the different approaches. That is what we refer to when we say minor timing adjustments, where you can adjust those. The offsets is because Route Five has a number of intersections along a corridor. They are timed so that they, the state times them so that each intersection can work as part of a system. So there's a, what is called an offset between the different signals to the north and south. So you can look at adjustments to those as well to, to optimize how the traffic would flow and how the intersections would operate. The, the, so it's just retiming some of those lights? Yes, in fact, we just looked at a minor retiming. Um, uh, this is based on our development yes. traffic to that one intersection of Route 5 and nor on the northbound 12 ramps. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, just sometimes we get these traffic studies, we get uh, speeds of the cars out on the road. Did that have any part of this? Because I didn't see anything like that. Yeah. If I recall, we looked at, I believe, state data. Um, to, I don't recall off the top of my head, but we, we looked at the speed limit essentially. Yeah, all right. We didn't do any any. You didn't any do any actual details because sometimes when we get those, we 
are quite startled by how we fast like to see how fast people are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's I sometimes a difference one time between middle time middle time the speed of it. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Andy, oh, we time to light. You're in a fantasy world. <laughs> Andy, in your experience, right now you wait three times for the light to change on Washington Avenue. Short times of the day. You people with all the facts and figures, you're in a fantasy world. You can't make the road any wider. That's true. <laughs> and all you're going to do is divert a lot of traffic from Washington Avenue to Pool Road. Then we're really going to have a headache. Well, traffic is one of the. Um, one of the unfortunate things that everybody has to deal with in modern society. Yeah. <laughs> People have to get around, and, and it's just a matter of uh, I know it wasn't your question, it was the other guy. The, the, uh, the water study, I, I, a hundred years flood now isn't the same as it was 25 years ago. I lived in this town all my life, and I never saw Spring Road flood until a few years ago. And it's only because of overdevelopment. Climate change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, Am I right or wrong? <laughs> well, it's your opinion, but put it up there. Uh, is that all you got, or? That's it. Okay. Well, okay. Hold on. Rich, you got anything about playing here? No, I'm pretty good for right now. Okay. Ron? Yeah, Andy, the timing change that they're proposing. Presumably, that's all they can request it, as they said, but it's up to DOT, I guess. In your experience, how often are those changes denied? If, well, it, it's all going to be based on DOT's uh, interpretation of the study. I mean, uh, so if DOT disagrees, turns it down, and the, so the flow goes from a C down to a D, which is sounding not so good. It's certainly not good when you bring it home on your report card. Um, how concerned are you about that? Uh, not overly, because I don't think the changes were that dramatic. In terms of the numbers that back up the, the letter grades that you're getting, I, I don't think that, it, that it's going to be that significant. And if it, if it were, it's something that DOT would be paying attention to as part of their review anyway. So, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be that concerned with that because we're dealing with a DOT controlled road, you know. The only trouble you get into, from my experience as a DOT, is sometimes they do look at the larger, larger picture and they'd be concerned with another intersection that's farther away, what have you. But I think that their interests are still in favor of traffic flow and this, you know, that that smooth uh, transition, if you will, or progress through the the corridor, if you will. But it seems like we're they're very uh, tight with their reviews, is my understanding. Yeah, the traffic section up there is one of the toughest ones to deal with. And that's one of the reasons. Well, no, so the lighting plan, I mean, I, we should talk. Can anyone talk to me yeah, about what's... Yeah, we were going to get to see something. What yeah. are we going to get to see? Well, we'll I mean, what are, we, what are you there. thinking about? What are we going to get to see? It's going to impact what we're seeing on the site plan right now. I mean, what kind of lighting are we even talking about? Uh, right. Well, I'll let Steve just goes here. I'll Steve talk about the lighting. It'll be full Excuse cut me. off. Excuse me. Yeah. We had a lot of people talk. So, uh, you're right. Sorry. Sorry, we have to wait till they finish their conversation. <laughs> I have no idea what you're asking. Okay, so we're going to wait. She's, they're, they're talking. Okay. So you're going to come back to us, I'm assuming, with a lighting plan, but you can tell me at least what you might have in mind right now, please. Yes, uh, be happy to. I'm sorry, you your race all the way? Uh, Steve Ditko. Thank you. Steve. Yes, again. Um, so the lighting plan um, is not currently shown. Typically what we would come back with are um, three things. We would have a, a detail of what the, the light fixture looks like, number one. Uh, that light would have a full cutoff so that the light doesn't um, go up and it, it shines straight down and you know, cutoff means it's kind of hooded. Um, we would have uh, a location of where those poles would be in order to provide the lighting. Um, and then finally we would have a photometric plan that would show the foot candles uh, that are achieved on the pavement and make sure that those are adequate for, uh, well, especially pedestrian 
uh, traffic, which would be a lower threshold than a, than a vehicle which has headlights. So that is what the lighting plan would, would comprise. We typically work with a vendor, and um, they have special um, tools to work with us to develop that, and we, we would be happy to provide that. So it's a really attractive <coughs> plan, so I'll give you a hint. I hope the lighting is attractive as well. And, you know, not. We do, we do like to see what they look yeah, like. Yeah, we do, and not not just a uh, you know plopped in there as an afterthought. So, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm sure that would be, especially given the the as as Ray explained, you know, the kind of courtyard appearance yeah. here. It, it's going to be an architecturally compatible fixture that that matches the building well, and we'll we'll leave that to Ray to uh, okay. pick out. All right. Just just for discussion having been on the other side of the table. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I agree. I normally like to see a lighting plan. But looking at this particular site, I'm a little bit less concerned than normally because of the who the abutting neighbors are. Yeah, as far what, as the light going and right, bothering the other right. neighbors, I agree but, with you. And I'm yeah. also interested in appearance, but I'm right. just wondering just to throw out whether or not it would be possible say we wanted to move forward on this to approve everything except the lighting plan and make them come back to us with a lighting fixture plan we're, and we're we're premature but let me let me address yeah. that from my perspective mm -hmm. one i'd like to see it um, but I, I also quite frankly i in we didn't get to the affordability right. plan but i have some mm -hmm. questions about the affordability plan mm -hmm. and i'd like comments from our town council about it okay. most particularly the enforceability because the enforce it does say you're going to report to us every year that's good one of the things i didn't when i first read it i missed that um, but i'd like her to look at it and tell me you've got some enforceability language that essentially looks to me like not enforceable well, it uh, tracks the language of the statute basically it may be but I, that hasn't worked yeah. you know it, it's been my experience thus far and i'd like to see if we can put not casting aspersions about your client, some teeth in it so that we can make sure it actually happens because thus far that hasn't worked very well. So I'm going to suggest that I'd like to see that comment before we approve it anyway. That it. doesn't mean we have to agree on it. That's just my opinion. I got you. Okay. So but that good. would give us the opportunity to get the lighting plan as well. <clears throat> I'm not looking to hold up their project. I know they want to get going and it looks like, it looks like I really don't have me from what's been put forward thus far much in the way of an issue at all. I would just like comments by our town council about the affordability plan. Well, that's the whole thing of it, uh, Tim. We got so many things to take a look at. Yeah, but, and they didn't even get to the affordability plan. Yeah. You can well, we got the affordability plan, which it's I know about. It's a big about. project. I think we and, should and not And the parking, you change from 20 to 15 percent. Pretty hard to figure that out, you know, amongst us right now. And then, of course, the lighting plan, they would sure. like to take a look at. And the, uh, and the um, just how much lighting you're going to have to have there. There's, a, there's just a lot to put together here for just this meeting here. I don't know what your position is on. On I know your position is go forward, <laughs> uh, get, but the fact of the matter is here, there's, there's a lot to take on. Uh, well, sure. I have in, a in question a about that, Vern. So, say we were so inclined to go Ooh. from 20 to 15. Are we going to be seeing a whole other plan? I mean, I know you had some layouts for us last time. Right. And do we, as a board, need to more or less tell them so they come up with another plan? I mean, that's not really fair to just throw it out and, and not say what kind of what we're looking for. I don't think so. Do, do you think so? We need to have another plan? Well, my, my sense would be we, we'd love to have you take action on the application tonight. If you don't take up action on the application today we would like some guidance as to Tell whether you right. like a plan that's 10 percent extra parking 15 yeah, percent extra parking or you like the 20 percent extra right. parking plan i think if we if we come to that conclusion that we want them to come back we need to tell them right right okay I was but going to propose the same thing that Commissioner Penton was <laughs> kind of proposed, that yeah. if you were satisfied with the plan, you could vote to approve it tonight, subject to the condition that we submit a lighting plan to the commission. And, uh, we could come back next month just for the purpose of We haven't of even gotten plan. through the whole thing yet, and I don't know if there's anybody to make comments on this. So well, we probably we're going to hear that. We'll hear that in a minute if we yeah, get yeah, to it. Go. So, and then we should talk about it before we close. Yes, I think so. Okay. Um, okay. You're closed on? Um, you're done? Sure. We're okay. Done. The commission? It done for the moment? Yes. At the moment, okay. Yeah, I Good agree. Enough. I agree. Okay. Good enough. Is there anyone here who would like to speak in opposition to this application? 
Thank you. Okay, Mary. I actually have uh, uh, oh, Mary White Summerling. <laughs> but this isn't comments, or this is in opposition. Well, can I? Uh, I wanted to make some comments, and then I have 18 questions. So I don't know when you want me to present them. 18, but they're quick. No, <laughs> run, run them right off. Wait, okay. It's a big option. I have, I have comments first, and then it goes into the questions. Okay. Okay, so um, I wanted to talk about public safety. So we, we're having a lot of economic development in town, both business and housing. You know, for example, uh, Amazon, North Haven Assisted Living on Clintonville Road, Bradley Home on Elm Street, apartments at Fantasia, uh, 50 elderly housing additional units on Pool Road, just to name a few. We already have the flats on Washington Avenue, Yelma Haven Hospital, Divine Street, condos in Lexington Gardens on Milltown Avenue, Quail Run, Senior Condos, Carmen Romano, Romano Apartments, and much more. The problem this town has, which is not the applicant's problem, is public safety is not keeping up with all this development. The chief, the fire chief reports monthly overlapping emergencies and an increase in calls every month. For example, in June, there were 162 more calls than that time last year with 96 overlapping calls. In September, 220 more calls came in emergencies than last year with 334 overlapping calls. In October, 244 more calls than the year before, 103 overlapping calls. In November, 225 more calls than last year, 102 overlapping calls. And in November, he reported 68% of those calls were EMS related. He also reported that the fire department did not respond to three different incidents because there were no fire department resources available. We definitely have a problem. Further, on November 24th, you may have heard, 33 Defco Park, there was a fire. When they arrived, there were 10,000 square feet uh, burning of a 32,000 square foot building. There were acids there, uh, chemicals, corrosives, in liquid and gas form. They were on the floor and in the air. The firefighters were exposed. There were tanks and equipment, their clothing, um, their boots, gloves, helmets, etc all their oxygen tanks, everything was contaminated and destroyed. The 30-year-old back, 30 year old back ladder truck, which has been condemned, we heard the uh, fire commission chair read it at a town meeting, um, it was condemned by the shop due to all the rust and its antiquated system falling apart often. That was forced into service and the switch to operate the ladder which doesn't go up to a five foot, uh, five story building, wouldn't work right away. Anyway, the fire, uh, fires were able, firefighters were able to contain the fire, which prevented contaminated water systems and evacuating neighborhoods. Three mutual aid towns uh, responded. One mutual aid town had all their firefighter equipments, equipment, et cetera, contaminated and destroyed. So I have a grave concern that if our primary ladder truck is out on another call and there is a fire and the second backup ladder truck is responds, it's, it's not gonna be able to, to uh, handle. So we as a community, as residents, we have to support the chief's proposal. Everybody who lives in this town, this affects us all. This is life and death. How much is a life worth? We have to support the chief's fire, uh, proposal to add fire, two firefighters per year. So to, able to, to be able to have all four shifts to um, have 10 firefighters, thus enacting the second rescue. And also we have to support him replacing old worn out and rusty apparatus. And so, now I'd like to get to my specific questions that I have regarding the proposal. Mary, if you just read them all and he'll take notes on me and he'll respond to whatever he wants. Okay, let's see. So I would like to know, so number one, I would like to know what fire prevention precautions have been implemented. Number two, are there the, are the smoke alarms wired and are they have battery backups in them? And where will they be located throughout the apartments and the hallways and so forth? Number three, can they explain a little more about the sprinkler system, where it is and how it works? Number four, are there any fire retardant construction 
materials being used. Number five. Okay. Okay. So what if the primary ladder truck is out on another call and there is a fire in the building? The backup ladder truck cannot reach the fifth floor. How will the residents get out from every floor? Number six, will there be elevators? Number seven, where will the stairs be located? How many sets? Where there'll be fire doors alarmed? Number seven, how close are the train tracks to the nearest building with apartments? How close to the curb will the buildings be? Okay, so another concern I have with uh, the west side, Upper Washington Avenue multi-use zone, when it was being proposed was the noise created when the train goes by. So I was at Swan Memorials and they're at 344 Washington Avenue to get a headstone for my father. We were there actually several times. Each time we, we were there, we heard the tr we had the train is passing by experience. It was extremely loud like thunder and things shook, the windows shook and things rattled. Number nine, how many apartments will be located in the back of the building near the uh, train track? Number 10, can or will any noise canceling construction materials be used when building any of the apartments, especially for the apartments closest to the tracks? Number 11, what kind of commercial business is being considered and what would the hours be? Number 12, he talked about the materials, brick and something, accent, lighter material, composite, something. I didn't understand what he's talking about. Can you please explain? Number 13, there will be many windows. Will these windows be double or triple pane? Can these windows be opened? Number 14, will, will there be air conditioning in the apartments. If not, will the, win will the tenants be able to open the windows? Okay. Can he uh, explain again what is on the balcony of each of the um, units? Let's see. Number 15. How will the building and the apartments be heated? Number 16. Is there any solar or any plans for solar? What is being done to save natural resources? Number 17, how many are one bedrooms? How many are two bedrooms? Are there any three bedrooms? Number 18, will there be a property management company after this is built? They are having a problem with their property management company up at the flats. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay. Okay, is there, is there anybody here who'd like to speak in opposition to this? Excuse me. Could we just move this? Thank you. Hello, Mark Diacolis of Center Washington. Sorry, Mark, last name again? Dean Cole, D I N I C O L A. And your address? 600 Washington. Thank you. I should have three questions. More of a validation on the three questions. Okay, um, the first is you mentioned during your presentation that it was a four story building, it's really five stores, right? Well, just, just ask him, he'll say yeah. no to that. And he'll say it's no really five no. stories, I just want to validate that, not four. That makes a difference in this town. Uh, the second one is, is um, can you tell me if the fire department has signed off on the site plan yet? Certainly will. Okay, and the third one is, you talk about water pressure. While there's good water pressure at that location, further down on Washington Avenue, the water pressure is low. <coughs> and I can tell you for a fact because I put a meter on it, and it's always low in that area. So how is that gonna potentially impact the residents that are further down there? So you're in the condos? Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it. That's low water pressure there. Okay. Okay, those are- That's it, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else like to speak in opposition? Okay, hearing none, Tim? You had a lot there, so. <laughs> no, there are a lot of, lot of points made, but I, I think they were basically, some of them up in three areas. One was fire concern issues, two was noise issues, and three was water pressure issues. So first I'll turn to Ray Sullivan, Ray, if you could just talk about the uh, fire suppression in the building, the sticklers, and, and uh, 
the emergency exits, the windows, that, that type of stuff. Again, uh, Ray Sullivan. So uh, uh, most, of the, most of the items brought up were good items, uh, and they're actually code required items. So, um, so, so we're building, you know, I, I'm not sure who said it. I never said it was four stories. In fact, I made reference to the, the, uh, uh, the, those patios on the fifth floor. It's a sure. five-story mm -hmm. building. So with that, with that th th this generically is what we call a podium. And so, um, you know, so we have a, a concrete slab poured up in the air. That provides a three-hour horizontal separation between whatever's below, the cars, the commercial, whatever, and the residential uses above. So we have, so we call it a four over one. So that, that three-hour horizontal separation and everything below is, is all non-combustible construction. It's type 1A construction. Everything up above is a type uh, 5A. So the uh, uh, 5A is a wood construction. Um, you know the the uh, so the uh, in, you know in the 5A there there are elevators. Uh, one one note we should we should make is that is that you know years ago the you know it was like oh my god we got to make the elevators big enough for handicap, uh, and so they all were. And then well, you know one thing we realized with all the multifamilies is like you know we actually have to make them bigger. They have to be big enough to take a stretcher. And so that's a code requirement. So these 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 elevators, you know, are, are are large enough to take a stretcher should EM services come. You know, you know, you know, the, the, you know, they're, they're, they're stretcher compliant. Um, you know, each um, each uh, building is served with exit stairs. The exit stairs are are at, at the end of the corridors. Uh, every unit is required to have two means of egress, and and uh, and so they go out into the corridor, uh, and and. And there, there, there are two exits at the end of the corridors. There is a maximum length of travel distance you must meet. You know we're, you know we're substantially, you know, underneath that. Um, uh, so there are two exit corridors in each building. Um, two exit four. stairwells in each building. At the far end of each building, yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, if relative to sprinklers, the the, the uh, there will be a standpipe system in each stairwell. Uh, and then the um, uh, and the building will be you know totally suppressed you know inside. Uh, I haven't actually gone through the calculations of whether or not we're going to do an NFPA 13 or 13R system yet. Uh, so that's uh, you know again it's a code requirement as to how many sprinkler heads you have and how often. You need to understand that some of us have no idea what those numbers or letters mean. Okay. okay. So when you say a stand whatever it is fire suppression system, please explain what that means. So this, this you know the standpipe you know the standpipe in the stairwells is that is that vertical red pipe that's painted yeah. and 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 it allows the you know the fire company to go in you know oftentimes a pumper truck will charge that you know if they need extra they can go up hook their hoses to it you know and, and, and address it so it's literally a standing pipe that goes up yes along. yes um, so uh, National Fire Protection Agency you know, NFPA uh, you know is is that you know there's you know it, you know NFPA 13 regulates you know, in, in, in this multifamily use, how many sprinkler heads and where they are. So you're in compliance with the national fire regulations? Yes, and, and, and so, so typically the details of that is not done until we do the working drawings. The fire marshal has to sign off on it. Yeah. Uh, quite often, towns will go request a third party review uh, and, and we'll go out and get an expert. They'll, he'll review the drawings and he'll comment on the drawings and, and a permit will not be issued until all those items are satisfied. Um, the uh, uh, smoke alarms. There are, you know, there are smoke alarms, you know, in the corridors. There are smoke alarms in the unit. Per code, you know, you're allowed to have, and, and they're really combination CO and smoke now. Uh, you know, you're you're allowed to have, you 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 are required to have a, you know, generally, you know, in the unit and in the, uh, you have to have it in the bedroom, just beyond the door, and you have to have it outside the the bedroom. In the general vicinity. So, if you had a two bed, you know, if you had a two bedroom area, and, and the two beds are off on this, uh, off on the side, they'd have one in each room, and they'd have one in the general vicinity outside. They have them in the corridors, you know, you know, as well. The, um, uh, they, you know, they are, they, 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 they are wired. Uh, the final uh, decision on how they're wired uh, uh, goes to, you know, uh, you know, coordination with the fire marshal as well. Like quite often, you actually want the alarm to ring inside the unit because how many times do you uh, cook smoky food and, and, and you set off the alarm you don't want to evacuate the building every time the alarm goes off so so they're, they're you know they're all centrally you know uh, uh, activated 
you know, and, and you know, and then uh, and, and then they, you know they, they they can be programmed to be tied into the main fire alarm system. Again, it's a it's a code related item. Um, the, the you know so so relative to fire protection. The entire building, the entire building exterior, uh, and every load building, every load bearing wall in the building, you know, will be one hour rated. So, what does that mean? So, so it, it means in the case of a emergency, in the case of a fire, you know, there's actually, at a minimum, an hour to vacate the building uh, before, you know, before a, a fire could penetrate that wall. Get past the wall. So, if there's a fire in one spot, you got at least an hour before it can get through that wall to the other. Or, or, or get into the wall and, and let the wall fail. Right. Right. Uh, so, I mean. Typically, a fire will, you know, if a fire occurred, it could occur in a unit. Right. So, you know, it's, it, you know, it'll never get to the unit and the other end of the hall. But, but, you know, but if it's load bearing uh, and holding up units up above, you know, we want to make sure that that is properly rated. So, so all the um, all the exterior walls and all the load bearing partitions are one hour rated. All the floor ceiling assemblies are also one hour rated. Right. And doors are. Fire rated too, right? Doors are fire rated. The the, uh, the the stairways were brought up. So so any any shaft that connects four or more floors is required by code to be two hour rated. So so uh, the, the stairs are masonry. They're two hour rated. A two hour rated wall requires a, a hour and a half door. That and that's what we provide. You know, and and the one hour wall uh, that that you enter into the unit, you know, you know, actually requires only a twenty minute you know rating on it. You know, and usually just the door itself gives you you know gives you. Excuse me one second, uh, Mary. I don't see Mary there. Where's, yeah, are you getting this, Mary? Yeah. Are, are you getting satisfied? Are you satisfied with what he's saying here? He's he's going in quite detail for you. Yeah. So far. Are you okay? So okay. So far. So, um, th so the the, the yeah, other thing, I mean, <laughs> kind of directed there to the to, to the field there. <laughs> uh, the the other thing that happens is is that in this type of construction, you have to draft stop every unit. So 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 that means when the the wall goes up and the trusses go across. Right. Um, you actually have to set up the framing so that you can actually get, you know, some kind of a plywood or some some material that that God forbid there is a fire and fire gets up into the ceiling, it can't travel across the right. ceiling into other units. So, the uh, you know all walls are draft stop, unit to unit, and unit to corridor, so 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 it can't escape. So. Um, so you know the you know the you know the building is um, you know the, you know like, again the building's fully suppressed. It's got the standpipes. It's got fire extinguishers in the hallway. It's got the smoke and CO alarms, uh, and 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 it has a fire alarm system too. Uh, you know that is required to meet a certain decibel rating at the pillow. So there are a number of ways to do that that hasn't been designed yet, but 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 it 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 has to happen and. You know, you actually have to have wiring ready to put in a device should a handicapped person who's hearing impaired take that unit. You know, there, there's a horn and strobe that's so irregular that, that will actually wake that person up. So all, all these things are taken into account, you know, you know, in, in the, uh, you know, the assembly of the building. Um, uh, you know, noise. So, so uh, uh, you know, we are required, you know, to meet certain sound transmission coefficients uh, and and uh, you know I, I honestly couldn't tell you you know what a 50 versus a 55 is, but 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 you know by by code we have to have tested assemblies, so that uh, you know the minimum STC rating you know uh, you know from from wall to wall or wall to a floor you know has to be 50 at a minimum. We always uh, uh, achieve a, a higher rating than than that you know you know because you know it's, it's dependent on how well it's put together so so we we'll, you know we'll never specify a SDC rating of 50 on a certain assembly you know you know we'll be up higher than that and, and monitor you know you know how it's put together so there are sound transmission ratings you know between units um, and then there are impact ratings so th there's a separate rating where the floor assembly has to be made so that impact, uh, whether or not it is somebody dropping a glass or high heels or something, you know, you know, protects and limits that sound penetration, and, that, and that's a different sound. So, you know, I can go on. You know, typically, you know, well, you don't have to educate. Okay. All right, all right. You know, I'm uh, so, uh, so, no, so another thing. So, relative to so the energy code has become so, uh, you know, the, the the energy code is quite quite strict. We have to meet the energy code. So, so really, what happens? You know, we have a separate 
sheet of drawing for a typical unit that says here's where you have to caulk. You know, you got to caulk everywhere. You got to do it. You know, it, you know, there may be blower door tests required. You know, we actually suck the air out and you know just make sure that the, that the unit is sound. What that does when you meet the energy requirement, you know, it enhances all the sound because if the air can't get through, the sound can't get through. Uh, you know, I've done many units. Uh, you know, recently one down in you know you know ninety five and, and you know in Norwalk ninety five is going going back. You know, you go inside the unit, you close the windows. You know, it's, you know, it's really great. Now that is not the same. Uh, you know, as a as a train going by, but but right. I just moved from Fairfield to you know to Milford. My building in Fairfield was right on the train tracks, and it was a slab on grade. Yeah, that used to rattle. This is a brand new facility. Uh, it's a concrete structure, you know, you know, it, you know, it's it's not going to move with the with the you know with the train movement. So uh, the, um, the 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 windows are operable. We have to meet light and ventilation requirements per code. We calculate that for every unit. So yes, they are, and they're also air conditioned. So I'll stop there. Come on. I just have a, a, a comment about the fire chief's comments, and he, he does put this, and the former fire chief used to add this comment as well, but he, he does his review for the site concerns, such as hydrants and turning radius for fire trucks at this level, and then he adds, the FD will need to review building plans to determine compliance with fire and life safety code requirements. There's no relief from those code requirements but when they, assuming they are approved, they will submit drawings for building permit. Right. But the fire chief saw these plans and gave us comments, is the bottom line. Correct. Okay. Did we miss anything? Uh, I, I would just remark on the uh, water comment. Again, Steve yeah. Pinsco. Yeah. Low pressure. Um, there was plenty of, I can't remember the exact number, plenty of pressure and volume in front of the site. Several blocks further north, it may be different. Um, the regional water authority system uh, terminates in North Haven. Uh, it doesn't continue in the Wallingford. It may be that the system downsizes several blocks further up in the 600 block. I don't know. But uh, adequate water to serve this development, uh, if there was any supplementation necessary in terms of a, a booster pump or anything, again, that would be picked up in the, in the detailed design. Okay, explain that one to me. What do you mean it would be picked up, and how would we find out? He, uh, that gentleman was saying it's worse up Washington Avenue from where you are, so mm -hmm. still within Washington Avenue. Mm -hmm. But the you, flats is only a short distance. Yeah, not too far, obviously, or something to 600. But it, will this, whatever you're taking, take away from the pressure problem that he already has? Do you understand my no, question? Yeah, yes, I yeah, do. Sure. No, okay. it, it shouldn't. I mean, if you know, if the whole city caught a blaze and um, it, you know everything, every hydrant was open. Yes. Yeah, I don't. But, I don't think know, that's in what terms of about. in terms of one, you know, if for instance, if you you had a project that's here that's drawing uh, water on an average daily flow, yeah. and further up the street, no, the system has has enough to support that demand. The, the, but system. enough to support the demand is, is too different than what I'm asking you. I don't think he's saying he's worried about when there's a fire and all the water is used up. His shower is probably not as strong as he'd like it now. Mm -hmm. um, so is this building going to cause his problem to get worse? No. And why not? Well, because there's a, st there's a static pressure that's driven in that whole section of the town okay. as to what's available at that point. When you when you come off of that, okay, there are different things that cause the pressure to go down. It could be the distance from the source, it could be the size of the pipe, it could be the age of the pipe has more friction, it could be however they built those subject buildings and what right. came in came into. So the what building. you're saying is whatever his problem is is the problem that's going on over there. You're not going to contribute to not, it. Not not related. Okay. Does that satisfy your your concerns? Uh -huh. <laughs> he hopes so. I beg to differ on that. Yeah. If you open up a gate, gate valve over here, yeah, you're gonna sort of water up over there. Yeah. I think. If I, you know what? Hey, I found my whole life. Gotta, I used seven, four, three inch pipe, ten inch pipe, and we open up a gate valve over there. The water sorts up over there. Okay. Very good, Joe St. Lou. Back good. up. Are you are you satisfied with the answers you have? I think it falls in line with the traffic. Uh, I, I need him at the microphone. Yeah, I'm going to step up there again. I want to make sure that you're. I think the water comment at this particular time falls in the same category as the traffic, Mark Nicola. 
Sure. Yeah. Central Washington Avenue. So I think it falls also with the traffic. Right. It's it, it seemed to be hearsay at this point. There's no really proof in it. It's just you know trust me, it's going to be okay. Well, can I ask you a question? Have you talked to your your owner or the your developer as to what's going on and what did they also talk to the water company about it and they okay. say well it's, it's within legal limits which could yeah. be you know 15 pounds of pressure is legal right. limits. that's pretty low pressure that's where it is okay so it's it's within legal uh, my concern is mm -hmm. that, is that this potentially make make it worse yep. right that's all okay okay thank you Jim I guess we get that covered? Yeah, no, I think we covered and got responses to all the questions from the members of the public. The only question we didn't answer is the names and identities of prospective commercial tenants. We don't know at this point in time. Yeah. We hope to, <laughs> that it's a popular site, a good something. location, right. but uh, we don't have any uh, tenants in mind right now. Okay. Um, there are restrictions within the reg itself on those particular uses, and they seem to have indicated uh, that the front portion would be retail and the balance of the commercial might be something else, uh, generally office. Mm -hmm. so. Any further questions? No further questions at this time. <clears throat> Anything from you? No, no standpipes. They have water, they'll have water in them all the time or you have to hook up water to it. That water pressure comes through them all the time? <coughs> Ray Sullivan, uh, yeah, they, they, they do have water uh, uh, in them, and then you can charge them to, to boost the pressure. Uh, you know, by by uh, the, the pumper truck will go to that uh, fire department connection outside. You know, which is hooked up to the standpipe. One minor question, Ray: the parking below is it going to have a dry be serviced by a dry system or not? It, that that would be a dry system, yes. Okay. And, and anything exposed to the exterior, the, the you know the balconies actually have a sprinkler head in each one. Oh, okay. Uh, and and, and that that's dry, but it's a plunger that comes through the, the wet system. Can I have any more questions here? You know, I'm not going to close this thing right now. If we're going to have any more questions. Good. good. Yeah. I'm good right now. You're good for now. Right. You want me to close this? No, I'm sorry. I, you're not going to close it yet, right? No, no I'm, I don't want to close it yet. I want to make sure we got. I don't, I'm not going to want to close it at all. Right. But okay, I, I understand that. But uh, have you got any more questions at this point? I do not. Okay. Rich, no, I'm all set. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we're going to keep. We're going to keep this open. I'm going to keep this open. Well, uh, okay, go ahead. but we need to, as we talk well, about. You need to talk about the parking limitation. I know they gave, or, and you guys dealt with this more than I did right. and when you were doing the regulation. Yes. Well, but Tim, Tim logically asked for some direction. Right. Um, your suggested alternate on the parking is something that I think we'd like to weigh. It's not black and white. So if you could perhaps develop slightly further from the schematic that Ray had and the civil, if you could show alternate A with 15% parking, it doesn't need to be a full drawing, just a sketch of that one area so we know if we gave some relief, what we're getting in return. Right. And I, don't, I think 15 is the optimum number for me. I don't want to go below that. Yeah. So well, you, you can give us as many alternates as you want. <laughs> but I think 15 think to 20%. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> no, no, well, yeah, we'll, we'll design a plan that shows 15% extra parking. It was Just so something that we can look at and well. that staff can right. look at as well. So. Right, because what we're looking at right now is your 20% one, just yeah. to be clear. Correct. Right. And, and we definitely like to see what lighting fixtures yeah. you yeah. have planned. And both physically what they look like and it would be great to have a photometrics plan <clears throat> also for staff as well as anybody Tim, you know, in the we're commission move, we're, we're moving to toward Dave on this uh, <laughs> we're going to continue with one or the other and Jim, yeah, I got this the, the sense that that's yeah. the Jim, can you yeah. enumerate a little bit on what yeah what I would like to do in my, I'll direct this at Alan I would like to take the affordability plan run it by Jennifer have her yes. take a look at it most for me most particularly with regard to the enforceability provision um, and the difficulties we've had with enforceability I, I read the plan it looks like it works and, and I'm sure it's in accordance with the statute I'm not looking to cause a problem but the you know we had to have if there's some way to put some teeth in the reporting to us because the other ones we have the reporting hasn't been hasn't worked very well and then if the reporting shows that there's a problem or there's a a refusal to report not that thinking your client will refuse 
what what can we do? And there's nothing here that tells me. So I would just like to get a comment from staff. Com I mean, uh, town attorney. Who is it? Who is it? Town council. Other than that, I, I think it looks. But at least fine. this is the best one I think we've seen anyway. Yeah. So, so, that's, so that's what I would send it to. So if I if I can just make sure that that I'm on target, we'll refer the affordability plan that has been submitted to town council, and in particular, we wanted to look at enforceability and quote put make sure there's some teeth in it end quote. So exactly. there's that, and then the developer will come back with a plan, an alternate plan, uh, probably just one drawing, the site plan at this time that would show. 15% extra parking on top of the 179 that'd be required, and they'll come back with a lighting package which will right. include fixtures, photometric plan, and a site plan that shows the locations of the lights. Good, right. You got it all. Okay. That's what we're looking Got it. We're going to continue. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Have a Thank pleasant you. holiday. We'll see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Take a ten minute break. Okay. Got you. Right. Yeah. Good enough. Okay, folks. We're back from our break, our short break. We are now into site plans and we have um, P18 40, uh, 100, 100 powdered metal road. Good evening. Uh, I'm Raj Farrell. I'm Hop Dyke Kelly and Spellacy. I represent. Me, sir. Could you tell me your name again? Yeah. Rod, I would be. Yep. Farrell. I represent Frank. A R R E L L. Thank you. Uh, I represent the applicant, um, Connecticut Investment Development Corp. Uh, it's for the principal, Dan Coughlin, is here, along with um, Clint Brown from uh, Lodero Engineering, who prepared the site plan that will be approved tonight. Um, I'll let Clint talk in more detail about the site plan presented to you. Um, as you've seen, I think, from the, from the items we've filed, uh, we're asking you to modify the parking requirements because there's been a change in the use. It was a, a printer. First time I saw this building was before Dan bought it, and it was a it was derelict. There were holes in the ceiling, there was water coming in, and mold in the offices. Uh, Dan's bringing it back to life, and part of bringing it back to life is uh, converting it to storage, warehouse, and office use, um, and that requires a little bit of change, I think, in in what you need for parking because there's fewer there's fewer employees. And secondly, you'll see that we've asked you to uh, waive any requirement for a sidewalk. Uh, it's an industrial area, IG80. There are no sidewalks in the area. This is on a dead end road. It's not a pedestrian use. Um, I'll, I'll just ask them to explain it to you better. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, Clinton Brown, C L I N T O N Brown, and I'm with the Lorero Engineering Associates, L U R E I R O. People have trouble with that one, but spell it out. Uh, so, uh, as uh, Rod indicated, um, uh, the applicant uh, has expended some effort to bring this building back to life. Uh, it's a 1960s vintage industrial building um, that uh, obviously housed uh, manufacturing type activities uh, for, for many years and then went into a, a state of disuse and uh, now Dan is bringing it back and along with that he's making some uh, site improvements to the property. Um, the site is served by uh, regional water, uh, public sewer, uh, gas and electric. It's got full, um, a full infrastructure already serving it and, and those are adequate services uh, given that the, the site is in an industrial area where uh, those facilities are, are appropriate. So uh, with respect to, to the site, um, it's six acres. The, the building is, is on the west side, uh, along with some parking and a large paved area that goes around the back. The eastern portion is uh, wooded, and it sits at the, uh, more or less at the end of, of uh, powdered middle. <coughs> Uh, the building footprint will stay essentially the same. It's about 55,000 square feet of floor area. 
Um, uh, there's a few appendages on the outside of the building that are the remnants of the old uses. Dan is working his way around, getting all those off and cleaning up the exterior facade as he goes along. There are a number of overhead doors existing. Those will essentially will remain. And there's a few new ones being installed to accommodate the, the uses that are going in the building. Uh, from a site perspective, uh, there's an existing driveway cut uh, here on the east side of the building that gives access to an existing parking area and also uh, to the, the uh, area around the back. That curb cut will be rebuilt. It's a 40 foot wide curb cut, certainly adequate for trucks and, and cars to maneuver. Uh, there'll be a second in only curb cut created at the west end to give access to the west side of the building. Currently there is no, um, uh, no doors on that side. Along the front, There'll be a new parking area that will uh, service what is principally an office use in the front part of the building. Uh, those will include um, accessible parking spaces in accordance with the current code. Uh, currently there are no accessible spaces on, on this site and that will all be a uh, new pavement and the frontage will all be uh, landscaped uh, in accordance with the landscape schedule. Coming around the side, um, we're gonna pull that parking that's way out here in closer to the building. Uh, that does a couple things. It just organizes the site much better uh, and uh, then also creates a larger uh, area here for future development. And we hope to come back and, and see you in the not too di distant future with something for over on the east side, but that's for another day. Um, storm drainage wise, uh, we have a slight increase in our impervious area. We did a, a drainage analysis and determined uh, how much uh, storm water we needed to store and to infiltrate, and we've got an infiltration system right here under the parking lot. Uh, that both uh, fills up with water from the runoff from the site, and uh, some of it infiltrates into the, uh, into the, to the ground. If it overflows, it goes into two catch basins and ties into the street system um, on, um, on um, uh, on Nettles Road. Uh, the site will be again uh, completely landscaped. There will be supplemental lighting around the back of the building. Uh, we did provide a, a, a lighting plan to show lighting levels and, 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 the, and locations and fixtures. Uh, the back of the site will be used for uh, storage. That will be completely fenced with slats in the fence so there's uh, no visibility from the adjoining property. Um, and uh, the, the build, the um, site will be uh, otherwise um, pretty much status quo as to as to what it is today. But it will look a, a lot better than it has any time in, in the recent past. Uh, we um, we did go through a complete review with your town staff. We believe that um, the storm drainage design was found to be satisfactory. And I know that there were some uh, fairly minor technical comments in an Allen's report and we certainly can uh, take care of those very easily. Uh, uh, there, there's nothing major that require rearrangement of the, of the plan in any way. So uh, uh, the two things that Rod mentioned, I'll just touch on a little further. Um, when we looked at your parking regulations, uh, for manufacturing uses, you have two very interesting requirements. Uh, it's either one space for every two employees that are normally employed, or one space for every 500 square feet of manufacturing floor area. When you lay that on the building program here, you come up with a minimum of seven based upon em the employee count of one per two employees, or 40 spaces if you use the square footage. In our opinion, the seven is too low, uh, and the 40 is way too high. So we did a little research with the Institute of Traffic Engineers, Transportation Engineers, to get some idea from them what's more appropriate uh, number of spaces for the manufacturing portion of the use. And they, their suggestion would have uh, translated into nine parking spaces. We actually went to 14. So we have 14 spaces for our manufacturing use then we have uh, separate parking spaces, additional parking spaces for the office use and the warehouse strictly in accordance with your regulations. So we're asking for a little flexibility on that parking number for the manufacturing use only. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm related to that. On your drawing it says 
total required space is 69. Correct. Total provided 69. Correct. So are you just talking about some imaginary line in the parking lot between? No. Where we, we have 69 parking spaces shown on the plan. Right. So what are you asking? If, if 69 are required and you've got 69, what are you asking for? Well, 69 is based upon you endorsing the use of the flexible requirement for the manufacturing space. We're saying that we would provide only 14 spaces for the manufacturing use instead of the 40 that your regulations yeah. would require if you so base it on square footage. If the regulation, if the, the manufacturing is done with our regular chart, they don't have enough spaces. Correct. Yeah, correct. Well, right. And they're uh, correct, but uh, but they had the two choices that are in the red. But it's either this, this or whatever, whichever. They wouldn't greater. make either one, though, right? If you did it, no, the full manufacturing. Well, whichever one is greater, so they'd be stuck with the forty, which is much greater than the seven. The other one does seven. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah so he's asking for relief, say yeah. from the four. I don't have one. Right. And he's right. selected Greater a number in seven. between. Yeah, and, we, and we bumped it up a little bit above what the ITE suggested. Yeah. So we want to be a little conservative. But, but as far as the office space and the warehouse space, the parking for those are strictly in accordance with your regulations. So it's only the manufacturing space that we're looking for a little uh, flexibility on. So on that plane, it's a, it's a, under parking calculations, it's item C that is, is right, the, could, is the issue they need, right. they're requesting relief from. That's correct. All right. Okay. I'm, I'm starting both the chart and the note, say 69 and 69. So are you telling me that the required space is really supposed to be more than 69? Yeah. Yes. It, so what's it supposed to be? It'd be 69 plus 40. Okay, so required should be 109. If you apply the regulation as it's, as it's written, as we understood your zoning regulation, it permits you to modify that requirement. For purposes of calculation here, we are assuming that you'd be willing to do that. I get it. Yeah. But, and it's a nuance, but required should say 109. I'd be more than happy to make that change. I'm just trying to understand what you're asking for. Okay. That's okay. all. I, I don't think that's exactly right. I, I, what, I, what is right? I think it's 90. I think it's 95. Right, you got to back out the, the 14. You got to back out the 14. Right. Yeah, okay. You're 26 more than what that would be. Okay. But what, what he's positing that what he believes is required. It doesn't say required by the regulations. <laughs> yeah. That's right. his argument. It's exactly okay. right. I'm but just, it is before. I get it. I'm just it was a little tricky on how to present that. We tried to present it in full disclosure as possible, but <laughs> yeah. I can see your comment also. I'm just well, trying yeah. to understand yeah. what I might be voting on. I, I certainly do. Okay. And then the second one was the, the, uh, the uh, frontage sidewalk. We did indicate it on the plan uh, to show where it would be. Um, I, I looked out here, there, there are no sidewalks anywhere near this particular piece of property. This, this use will not generate any pedestrian traffic. There's no uh, attraction that people from this facility would go to in the immediate area that would necessitate pedestrian activity. So we, we honestly believe that a sidewalk would not be warranted here. Um, so that, that was the, uh, the basis for that request. Um, other than that, we believe we are um, fully compliant with all our regulations and standards. What can you tell us about the outdoor storage? We usually don't like outdoor storage, even if it's got slats or not, because people can put all manner of crap in there. Well, and so uh, what's what's going there? What's the outside? Uh, I, I don't know that I have an answer for that. Maybe maybe uh, Dan, do you want to comment on that? That's yeah, more sure. comment on that. Uh, Dan Coughlin, C-O-U-G-H-L-I-N. Um, basically, I have somebody looking that it's basically truck storage. Uh, no materials, no um, nothing that he would bring back in store other than a vehicles. Um, a container maybe with some tools in it. Um, but it's primarily for truck vehicle storage. Something he could lock up. You, you have some in there now? 
there's I have stuff that I have there that I'm working on the building mm -hmm. with. There's some stuff that I own that we're doing. You know, some sure we did the, we did the roof. I have a permit for the roof. I have a permit for the electrical service. Uh, there's nothing there now that this guy would bring in if he wants to. He's talking about renting some of the back, and he needs some vehicle storage. Right. Well, I saw that in there. Yeah. I went to there. So it would be related to the warehouse use. It would be related to warehouse use. Primarily, the manufacturing is the manufacturing with the parking. There's um, there's a guy looking at it that's a printer. That's it's mostly warehouse. You know what I mean? It's very little manufacturing for the parking side of it. Um, the back would be the vehicles. The guy would take the back piece of it if he would have warehouse in a small office. But he's also going to have part of the part of the building, I guess. So well, yeah, that's to, you're like, not going to you're not going to lease the the parking lot. For parking vehicles or that's any what other thing. Is going to do. Hmm? No, no, no. We, no. He's saying it all would. our parking, what required parking, is shown out of. You know what I mean? He has. Yep. It's shown not in that storage area. Correct. It's okay. Parking. So you're going to lease this other than the warehousing in the back part of the building. Okay. Correct. So it'd be okay. a separate tenant for just outdoor storage. He would have some back space, and he would have the outside. So storage. he'd have some of the, the seventy-four hundred in the back. Yes. And have some outdoor storage. Yes. Okay. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't we just have a problem across the street? No doubt. And it was with the vehicle. Across the street. It's it's not a junkyard. Though. This is not a junkyard. Thing. No question. This is yes. not a junkyard. These are registered vehicles that move and drive. But, we, get, but, but we need to make that limitation. Yeah. That's kind of what we're say getting at. Vehicles, we, cannot, you know? we cannot just say we're going to allow 43,000 square feet of outdoor storage. Right. Exactly. So we have to define what it is so that we can enforce it if it turns out that you sell the building to somebody who then stores 8 million junk vehicles. Legally registered motor vehicles. Operable. Uh, operable. These are all operable. Operable motor registered motor vehicles. And that's the only thing that would be stored. That would be the only thing back there. Not unregistered junk. So, so he would use them in his business. Yes. They would go in and out there every yes. day. Yes, three have trucks. A problem with that. So, can okay. we define it as legally, legally that? registered sure. operable sense. motor yeah. vehicles? Yeah. I got it so written down. That would give us a way within the business is being associated yeah. with business. Yeah. If it, I'll just ask you a question, Dan. <clears throat> There are certain construction vehicles that don't get registered, but they're operable. Do you have an issue with that? I do not. Uh, okay. No, you mean like a... a, a like a loader, loader or, or an excavator or, a, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. sure. No. Okay. All right. So we can, like work, just, a, we can work on the language. Yeah, you understand we, can, we don't want junk back there. It's not going to be a junkyard. So we got to define it in some way that it's There's 30 junk. vehicles drive back there. There's 30 vehicles that leave every day. I understand. Okay. If someone, are, are you considering, um, say, a construction trailer, something that would also be roadworthy potentially, but yeah, if it's if it's a trailer, um, like a construction trailer, it would have a plate on it, a registered plate, yep. a transport yeah. plate, so it would be registered. It's but not that's stuff okay. that's going to yeah, be yeah, stored yeah. and ripped okay. apart. It's not a junkyard. We'll work trailer. out the language. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. As long as it, as long as yeah. it, we can figure out some way to say no junk. Yeah. Other than that, I don't, I don't have a problem. I don't, frankly, you know what I feel about sidewalks, but this is again one of those rare, <coughs> <areas. coughs> one of those rare cases. Yeah, it is. And I appreciate it. Okay. You know, I, I have a question, and and. Um, I got to apologize for this. Uh, I, this is sort of a continuity issue with the former town engineer. As far as powdered metals road or drive is concerned, it's our understanding that the um, well that you own it, that you own the balance of of uh, the town to living over my road. That's correct. To access their dump. We have it. We have the ability to drive over it. Um, have you considered actually deeding that uh, to the town? Um, we, we have the right to go over back and forth. We own the parcel that is at the right. end of the uh, what Mr. Brown described as a dead end. Right. Um, we took that uh, on a tax foreclosure, I guess. But the um, we is have fourteen that. acres in their own. Uh, I think it is something around that number. I'm 14 sure. acres. Yeah, so, right. you know, the, what I don't understand would probably be a good idea <laughs> to register, to uh, 
turn the road over to the town. The yes. town would make it, would plow it and maintain it and bring it up to standards. Yeah. Does, does that it, have any bearing on our yeah, decision issue, issue tonight? I'm kind of wondering no. while he's here uh, what his thought uh, was. Yeah, I, I, I'd that. love to hear what the options are. You know, I, I think my attorney would have a comment on that also. <laughs> um, <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I want to develop that other side. Powdered Metals Drive goes down um, like halfway between where my property is and then it's a right of way. Actually the guy on the end of the street drives over a right of way. He, he was supposed to come on Sacre Point Road. And he drives over the right of way to get to his building. And then the town drives over the right of way. But if that was turn transferred and who's going to build the road, who's going, going to make the road town to town standards, once we work that out, uh, I want to access my other lot to put up another building. You know, yeah. it's, it's Bart, a nice, nice yeah, Barnick's place. got the other parcel where you had previously approved a building and he constructed a building. His frontage is on Sagan Point Road, if you recall, yeah. but he only uses the access, which he has a right to use, um, that right. goes It makes sense to make that legal land, road. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it would be To nice. continue the road, it yeah. makes sense. If I might, by all means. Uh, the title to this whole area is very convoluted. Uh, we've spent time looking at it. We don't think he owns that. No. no but no. you know what? If he doesn't own it, then there's no harm in quick claim. He can right? beat it, right. So, you know, if the town wants to take over that road and maintain it, then I don't think that we have an objection to that. Mm -hmm. But as like I said, I don't think he owns it. There we go. Thanks. Fair enough. Yeah. There's a lot of things. Yeah, Okay. I think we're all set unless there are any other questions about Yeah, you. you got any questions? Good. Uh, so good, let's go. No, no. No, no one of the walls I just heard it. Working. Okay. Yeah, we'll work out that language. Okay. Okay, okay, uh, moving along on site plans, it'd be 18-42. Uh, One, a 411 Universal, Matthew Taylor. Good evening, uh, my name is Jeff Boyd. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Connecticut with Bowler Engineering, located at 16 Old Ford Road in Rocky Hill, Connecticut here on behalf of McDonald's Corporation. Um, with me here tonight is Matt Tyler, a civil engineer from our group as well, and Matt and I are responsible for the plans that are before you this evening. Uh, just to give you a little bit of context, we prepared uh, this exhibit number one, which is just an existing aerial exhibit uh, dated 12-14, just to put in context where the site is located, as McDonald's part of, they lease from part of a bigger parcel of land that's, I believe, 17.71 acres, which is outlined in black here, that consists of Dick's Forming Goods, the Home Depot, um, and then other various retailers. And of that 1771 acres, they are leasing just under an acre at 0.98 acres. Uh, they're bordered to the west by I-91 and to the east by, or to the, to the east is I-91, to the west would be Universal Drive North, and to the south is Universal Drive North, and then BJ sits to the north of the state. While I'm on this one, I'll give you a little bit of background on why Bowler was hired uh, by McDonald's. A little background. A little background, it'll be quick. Yeah. So we've done uh, about 20 of these so far, and it's part of an ADA enhancement program where they've gone across the country and they're bringing all of their exterior site work up to ADA compliance with the new regulations. At the same time they're doing that, they're also going interior to the building, they're raising signs of heights with the new regulations, they're redoing their seating areas out front, and it's just part of an effort to just bring their um, the current goes up to compliance. So as part of that effort, they basically get into doing very little site work. And all this all this plan is, the, the text is stripped away, but it's the site plan that you guys currently have in your packages, just colorized to the areas that they are going to be modifying as part of this application. And basically what this is, is they have an ADA consultant go out, do an assessment, 
and they basically tell us, the designers, where they're not in compliance. And typically on all of these restaurants, between settling and all the tolerance from a construction standpoint, what they need to do, they're always slightly over what's allowed. Um, so they're taking that on and, and going around. And like I said, we've done about 20 of these in the state so far just this year. Um, they are basically going and doing these two handicap stalls and then regrading what's shown here in the dark gray. And as part of it, they're replacing all the sidewalks that are adjacent to the building uh, so that there's less than 2% cross slopes and 5% running slopes so that the path of travel is there. Uh, in the cases that they're allowed to connect to a public right of way, we are asked to do so by the third party ADA consultant. And in this case, there was a recently installed sidewalk along Universal Drive North that at the time it was constructed, they didn't have the option to, to connect to anything. So they are going to propose um, a sidewalk connection to the public right of way. Grading's not a challenge here. Um, it's relatively flat in that vicinity. So then they would just be putting a new seat down next to where they're doing the sidewalk improvements. So it's a good thing somebody put that sidewalk in. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> so um, also at the same time, they recognize that a lot of the patios that they have, the outdoor seating areas, are made of brick and over time settle as well. And there's tripping clearances. I believe it's a quarter inch that. It's not ADA compliant, and although we weren't asked to do it, they've been going through and removing the brick and putting down new concrete so that it's ADA compliant as well. Um, from a site standpoint, that's it. They are replacing the menu boards and the pre-browse menu boards in the same locations that the current ones exist, and then they're also getting rid of the directional signs on either end of the driveway entrances. And right now, if, you, if you're familiar with the site, they're the big yellow arches that are like four square feet. They're putting in a more modern sign that I believe is about two square feet in the same exact locations. That just looks more in line with the building <coughs> that I'm about to get into. So from, that's it from a site perspective. And this is basically the new elevation and what they do as part of this ADA program, they've taken this opportunity to go ahead and enhance their facades and bring their inside of the buildings up to code. So this is kind of the new look that you've probably seen at other McDonald's throughout the state. They vary slightly depending on where you're located. Uh, they're coming in with their three sign package, which is essentially a 14 square foot M on the front, a 34 square foot McDonald's word mark, which is what is currently there today. It's just centered on the building. And they're coming in with the M logo on the side, uh, 14 square feet. So the signs are fully compliant with the signage regulations. Um, from a zoning perspective, we're actually, we looked at it two ways. Uh, originally, we looked at this just from a, um, the least area. We went through in the site plans before you this evening have just the least area bulk chart that shows how we're changing it or not changing it. And the only thing we're changing is we're reducing the building coverage by uh, 169 square feet, and that's just due to the fact they're getting rid of the, the bump outs. There's two, two bay windows in the front or two bump outs, and then one on the side, so they're just straightening those off on both sides. So that's the only change from a, a building standpoint. So we're slightly reducing impervious coverage. Um, and I believe that's it. They're bringing all their signage up to code, as I touched on. Um, unless you have any other questions, that's essentially what they're proposing. Construction time is about eight weeks. A lot of people ask that. Be open or close? Open. And they, they have it kind of down to a science where they end up doing a lot of the site work rather quickly within a week or two. And while they're doing the site work, they stage it in a way that the store can remain open. And then when they go to do the interior fit out and the interior updates to keep the drive through open. So they're not usually closed. And if they are, it's very minimal. OK. Any questions? Nope. No. I'm glad that they're making it more handicap accessible. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, especially Stand. the outside. We've just discussed my comments just in terms of the graphic uh, presentation of it. It's just got to be a part of the larger site. I don't really want anyone coming back later, 10 years from now, thinking that that's a subdivided lot. We okay. talked about it. Uh, I, I'll give you this. Um, this is the Banfield uh, <coughs> site plan, and it has the pertinent parking data and land area you take it from there. And we, we went ahead, we, we saw your comment letter, and we totally agreed with your assessment. So part of this exhibit, which we will be submitting as part of our, our new sure. submission, we actually did a new zoning analysis table, assuming that it's looking at the entire lot, and we did parking counts. It's based on aerials and GIS, but 
the only thing that changes, even when you add all the extra area, is the 169 square feet of building that's being reduced. So, got it. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Very good. Thank you. Guys. Okay. Um, I'm going to just move right into uh, move into other. Which would be, uh, or do you want to consider taking the change of yeah. use? Oh, oh yeah. This moment? Oh, I'm sorry, I missed. That was the well, thing. It, 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 huh? it was added. Oh, it was the one that was added on. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's change that. Take that change of use there on number two Broadway uh, from a. Uh, it's from that formerly uh, Life Center, whatever that might be, to a nail salon. Can I get. Can I get a motion to go into deliberation? Make a motion. Wait. No, wait, wait no. I don't know that you need to do that. If you can hear we'll out the, uh, the change okay. of use. Okay, somebody here for this? Okay. <laughs> Stop. Good evening. My name is Brian Till. Teal. Uh, I'd like to propose. Spell your last name, please. Teal. Teal. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to propose a change of use at 2 Broadway. The unit is 1,400 square feet. Um, it's currently vacant. It used to be a life center, which is a weight loss place. I like to change to a nail salon, where we'll be offering manicures, pedicures. It'll be open from 10 to 7, Monday to Saturday. And we're just putting in plumbing work and no exterior work or anything else. Um, we already talked to a fire marshal, health department, and we're just waiting for your approval to get the building permit. So I think it's going from an office, as near as I can right. tell, to service. Okay. okay. Office to service. I don't any have any questions? questions. No. No. I'm all set. No. Staff? Okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. We're going to... Uh, okay. I'll take care of that. No, 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 no. Okay. We'll go right into... Hmm? want to continue right along? Go into other? Other, yeah. Uh, John, um, John? I need to recuse. <coughs> yeah. Uh, Ronald will be excusing. Um, Luke will be what? sitting on this. What's that? In, in uh, Ron's place. Wait, he'll, be, oh. he'll be out. He's excusing. Okay. So you'll be sitting, that's all. All right. Okay. But should we go to uh, our attorney, Chuck Andrews, first? Or yes, should we go to means. John? What do you think, Chuck? Um, Chuck will be briefer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can say oh, what we're here on, on a remand from the decision on the Housing Authority appeal, right. that uh, the court sustained the appeal. It did allow the, the commission, one, one of the issues we consider is can you move the building to lessen the impact? And the court said, well, you can consider that, but if it affects the financial viability of the project, then um, I'm just going to approve it as is, essentially, is what he said. So, um, uh, and, and there's a process that you can submit an affidavit that they have to swear that that's the effect. And, and the applicant has submitted an affidavit saying they can't move the building because, and they gave reasons, um, that it would cost a lot of money and it's not reimbursable. And they were required to design 90% of the project before they apply. So, um, they've now come forward and said, we've satisfied that and we're asking that they, that you approve the application and the court has basically said that if you don't approve it all they got to do is write me <laughs> and I'll approve it <laughs> so um, essentially um, it, uh, it's, it's a formality um, there are the the applicant uh, has uh, remember we have had we've encouraged settlement discussions along the way there was uh, a note there were some settlement discussions and revised application there were some changes that uh, I think involved additional arborvitaes, relocating the dumpster, changing in site lighting, changing in some of the cosmetic stuff, the colors, um, and uh, on the roof shingles and a few other things that are outlined in our architectural report. Um, I believe that it's agreeable to those. And there were other conditions of approval that were, that staff had recommended as part of the original revised application, which uh, would also be, which are standard conditions. Um, and I believe the applicant's agreeable to those. So that's the recommendation as your counsel is that you approve the application with those uh, provisions, <coughs> the, revi the revised applications with those provisions that were discussed uh, in the last application. I believe there are several plans and there's an architect's letter that outlines them and as well as the staff comments 
uh, from Allen and the engineering department, I believe. Uh, we had some routine conditions. And the, and the fire marshal as fire well. Marshal. I think his comments were included, but we may as well just include <coughs> Okay. Just to, to short circuit, I, I read the decision. Yes. The judge could not have been more emphatic that essentially we had to approve this as long as they filed the affidavit. I saw the affidavit. You're satisfied the affidavit satisfies the conditions the judge is saying that they, they had to show us that there was an adverse financial impact from moving it. As you know, we wanted them to move it, but right. the judge said adverse financial impact. I saw Mr. Uh, Lepresti's affidavit saying it's going to cost money, can't do it. Done. We've got to approve it. That's kind of what it said. Yes, I agree. I, that's a fair summary. Yep. Not that hard. <clears throat> okay, we got it. And so there's not much Jill? for me to add. Um, the, only, ahead. the only thing I wanted to clarify is you're approving <coughs> the original application with the cosmetic changes that we, we, as a condition, you can put on the cosmetic changes that we brought to you and withdrew that application. And I just wanted to be, and we have said we will also accept all of the standard um, comments, but comments, because if you had approved it in the first place, you would have approved it with those. So we had no objections to those. Excuse uh, me, John Lambert, name for the record, please. My name for the record is John Lambert, and I'm here for the housing, North Haven Housing Thank Authority. You. So the only thing that I want to clarify is at one point in the, um, in with the revisions, we never submitted a plan, but we talked about putting a flat roof. The affidavit covers that's not on the so uh, with that, I'm done. Okay. So how would you how, how would you phrase it? Well, well, the, one, one of the conditions there is an architect's letter that uh, was submitted. That's why I was referring to that. Uh, Can yeah, I show that too? Sure. Did you sell that this year? The commission you? received that letter. Yeah. So it's the letter from. Uh, yep. Paul Selmer. It's got a big S and up right. right hand. Right. Side right. So those things that. are going to happen. Right. That's my question. Yes. Yes, they so. are for sure. Well, no, we're waiting. Oh. Well, assuming. Well, I would hope so. Um, I, I thought it was all. Yes, it was when you it was from the October okay. accidental that occurred in November. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he says no, I'm not going to do this. Did you do plans that show those things? I don't remember. Hi, for the record, my name is Paul Selnow, architect from Shadow Selnow Associates. And um, yes, I did. S E L N A U. Thank you. And yes, I did prepare this for the neighbors' meeting. This is consistent with what we uh, said at that meeting and presented, or was ready to present that night. And we have no objection to making this part of the plan. Okay. So the question that uh, the town's attorney has is John, you come up the mic, please? I thought it was loud enough, but the can, okay, <laughs> the question that the town attorney had was did we not submit some kind of um, site plan that showed the changed dumpster and the additional um, uh, trees and whatnot? The, 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 this is Paul Salow again. The answer to that question is that we prepared it, we were going to be presenting it. We did not present it, so we did not submit it. That was my understanding as well. Correct. Okay. But so how do we how do we do it so that it becomes? Yeah. I'm not directing this to you. I'm directing okay. it to those guys. How do we do? Yeah. It how so do we do this, Chuck? What, what I think you do is you impose as conditions the this letter, and I can read them. Please. Plan additional arbor. It, the, it's basically you put you make those conditions of approval, and require them to submit plans to reflect those. And that's okay with you? Yeah. Essentially okay. already done. Does not get some Okay. That doesn't include the so, It does not include the Understood. Right. And just to, to make it clear, there was also a there was a regulation submitted. We're not doing right. anything on that regulation so tonight. Let me explain that. Right. You read the decision. Yeah. There were two aspects to it. And in one, the judge seemed to think that you might want a regulation and ordered me to submit one. Right. Actually ordered me to submit it within 30 days. It took me two months because I had so little heart in doing it when I know that you have no desire to adopt yeah. that. And but if we're going to, we'll do a whole different process. This what, wouldn't be how we do it. What the judge was saying was, the issue came up, that should we have had that as a requirement 
for the application itself. And what the judge held, trial court judge, held was that it is not a requirement of an application per se, but that at any time during the process, you could ask for it, including after, um, while that appeal was pending, at right. any time you could have asked for it. So he ordered me to do it, and I submitted one, and I assume that you will take I, it I up just want. So that we're, when explain, we talk about it, yeah, we're not Explain going what to it is, though, so that people understand, John. The people who are listening, explain what you were told to prepare, please. We were, um, we were required to propose a regulation in which the 830G aspects of the project would actually be um, uh, within the parameters of the regulation. So for example, and I don't remember the density, but it's in my regulation there, if there's, it's an R20 zone or something, and we're in a split zone, as you recall, um, and if there's a, a, let's say if in an R20 zone there's a bonus for affordable housing or for multi-story housing of 10 units per acre, that if we're asking for an affordable housing, an 830G type of application, if we're asking instead of for 10 per acre, we want 30 per acre, then he was suggesting that there be a regulation which allows 30 per, per acre in that zone. It's the same thing that happened with Lexington Gardens. Their application was for R40 zone, and they uh, uh, they submitted an, an amendment, which, strangely enough, allowed them to have exactly as many units there as they were proposing under 830G. And that's essentially what the judge was asking us to do. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and it Thank explains you. it for everybody else. Thank you. Thank you. Right. It, it was a result of one of the arguments I'd made in the appeal based on a footnote in the case that suggested that you should be following regulations along with that. And so we said, okay. But I, yeah, it, it's, I, I, if you're going to do that, I would do a different regulation. Than what exactly. Right. <laughs> Which is, therein lies the bottom line. So is right? If we're going to do a regulation, <laughs> this is not the regulation we're going to do. No, so we can yeah. just not deal with that aspect of it. Tell the right. judge thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, do we have this set I started? think we're ready. I think we're good. Okay. Um, all right, then. Um, I guess, Chuck, we're, we're all set here. We'll take it in deliberations, right? We're going to take this up in deliberation. We don't have any choice, but we're going to take it in deliberation. deliberations. Like, no. do, do we want Chuck to uh, linger for the deliberations? We're going to do his first. We'll do it yeah. right now. How about that? Okay. It, it, uh, Ron is out. And, and and Lou is in, so uh, can I get a motion to go into deliberation? I'll make a move, motion to go into deliberations. I need a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. Okay, Ron, second. Uh, uh, Rich, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Jim? Yes. Can I make this proposal? On application for P1626 of North Haven Housing Authority, I'd make a motion that we approve the site plan. That's what we're here for, the site plan that was originally proposed and that the court indicated should be approved um, with an amendment or rather a condition of approval of the items that are contained in the July 1st, 2017 letter of the uh, I forget what the gentleman's name. Selnow. Paul Selnow. Selnow's, uh, Selnow Associates. So that would be a condition of approval, but otherwise we're just that we approve the site plan that was originally proposed. Along with staff and, and town engineer uh, comments. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, you make the motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Okay, we'll continue right along with the... Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Get Ron back in. Oh, oh yeah, I want to tell Ron. Ron. He's out there in the dark. Ron, turn the light on. He is in the dark. Ron, turn the light on. Is he okay? Are you meditating? <laughs> <laughs> that was dark out there. It's like you were being punished to come to the cellar. <laughs> okay, well, Ron, we are in deliberation. Okay. Are you in agreement with that? Sure. Okay. Well, that's We're it. In it anyway. All right. Let's go back up to. Uh, He's just sitting. Up to the top, Teresa and Jim. Ron, as soon as you're with me. 
I'm with you. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. You're out now. I'm out now? Yes, sure. He's out. I'm out. Let the record show. You can still be. He's Are out. you ready? I've been ready. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, on the uh, Pellegrino, the Bernie Pellegrino on the 18 39. On the amendment, or the zone amendment, uh, on the signs. I make a motion to approve this. Okay. I I'll a second motion. It. Can I get a second? I'll second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good enough. Okay. The next two is out. That has been continued. I want to get a motion to continue the special permit on Timothy I'll Lee. Make a, I'll make a motion to continue. And I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's continue. Um, we'll go over to 18-40, uh, which is um, 100 Powdered Metal Road. Do you have the, um, they want a waiver of sidewalks? You want, and want a shot at that language? Yeah, yeah I well, know that. Okay, so well, I'll make a motion that we approve for purposes of discussions with the uh, waiver of sidewalks. Um, subject to us coming up with the language regarding the right. outside I'll second storage. that motion. Okay. Okay. Who seconded? He made a motion. Who seconded? Now you got the, so, get the, the link. Go ahead. Right. So when we were talking about outside store, outdoor storage, um, I'd like to amend the motion to approve to allow the outdoor storage with only legally registered operable motor vehicles or other vehicles on site or that are associated with on-site business. Okay. Okay. I mean, is that good for the board? Is that a That's okay. That's fine by me. I, I, honestly, I think it might hamstring them a little bit because I think it could be some equipment that he's going to well, use that's not registered. Um, now, he seemed okay with that, but it seemed like there's got to be some construction well, equipment. Registered slash operable. Oh, construction like, equipment. Is operable in there? Because it has to be. I was going to put it in. Right. Limit to registered slash operable. Right. Legally registered slash operable motor vehicles that are associated with on-site business. Okay. I, I don't like slash. <laughs> Okay. Um, All right, she's making this amendment to the motion. Well, wait, we're, we're still in discussion about it, Vern. So, how about... And or? Outdoors. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If we say and or, it's kind of, then it has to be one or the other. So, okay. yeah, I would be okay with that. So, not slash. And or. Registered and or operable. Right. That way, one way or another, it's not junk. So the slash between and and or. I prefer that. Okay. <laughs> could be junk if it's right. Hey, let, I let the sidewalks go. <laughs> you got that? You got the way you want it? So do we yeah. do that as a condition of yeah, the? Sure. Yes, sure. The, okay. The uh, uh, to, to limit the outdoor storage to motor vehicles uh, registered and or operable and associated with uh, a leased interior space. So I'll amend my motion to add yeah, that condition. Okay. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I will second yeah. that. Oh. Okay. Well, Hold on. We had a second. second here. No, I think I was already already second. Oh, motion. no, I second. That's right. I amended. You're right. right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. So the amendment is out. We're not going to do her amendment at all. So Jim <laughs> amended his own motion okay. to With add her this. Right. Okay. So Jim's got a motion. And we have a second and over here amended. with Ron. Okay. Got it? I'm with you. Got it, Pam? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. That's it. We're all set, folks. Okay. Um, down to um, 411 Universal Giants, 18-42. Motion to approve. We'll make a motion to approve. Remember 365 Universal? No, 411. 411. Okay. I'll, make a motion. Right. Yep. I'll make a motion to approve this with applicable staff comments. I will second that. Okay, we have a motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Next one is out. This one is good. We got, got, got no views. extensions. Change of views. I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Yeah. My 1843, do we need to vote on that to continue to? Or? We do. We, we should. Yeah. Oh. You got that? Yeah, we got that. No. Oh. No, so we need to make oh, a motion yeah. for 1843, the site plan. That's the site plan. Continue it. 
motion. Oh, okay. Can I get a motion to do that? I'll make a motion to, to continue, continue the site plan application. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're down to extension, bond, and change of use. Right there. Can we get the change of use for Broadway? I'll make a motion we approve the change of use for number two Broadway. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, motion to approve November 13, 2018 minutes. I'll motion. move to approve them. And I'll second that. I'm oh, sorry, oh. made the motion. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, uh, but the uh, Open Space Advisory Committee representative. I don't want to. Oh, yeah, I do. Teresa has been serving in that capacity. Well, she wants you well, like to. Is, is there somebody else who would like to? I mean, I'll, I don't want to be a, you know. An open space hog. Right, right. <laughs> Which is kind of a would weird thing. Like nice. Yes, I would, but but I want to open it up to any other members since I've had the pleasure. Okay. Um, is there anyone else who wants to? I, I appreciate the offer. And if All I right. wasn't you, would, would you like to do right right no, take it? But my like plate it? is okay. Okay. okay, we can Jim, I'll, I'll sure. make a motion we reappoint Teresa as the open okay. space okay. advisory we'll committee we'll representative. Teresa? Oh, happily. Okay, I'll okay. second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you very much. Everyone have a good holiday. Yep, you too. Oh, yeah. The preceding program is brought to you in part through a grant from the town of North Haven. Watch town meetings or other videos on demand at nhtv.com.